Hello and a very warm welcome once again to Belgrade in Serbia where you join us at the Stark Arena for further coverage of the AIBA Men's World Boxing Championships 2021. It is the fifth day of competition and what an afternoon session we have in store as we move to the number of over 200 bouts. We've got action from the 54 kilogram bantamweight divisions and 92 kilogram heavyweight divisions still in the preliminary rounds of these two particular weight classes. Remember, 588 boxers from 88 countries taking part in this, the 21st edition of the AIBA World Boxing Championships. It's been terrific action so far, no rankings, no seedings. So some boxers who may well have been the beneficiaries of buys in the past by virtue of their accomplishments over the previous Olympic cycles. Well, they've been thrown in at the deep end, often at the round of 64 against another top operator. So some outstanding boxers already eliminated. As we take a look at the bantamweight contest that get us underway. Seven bouts in the bantamweight division before we move up to the 92 kilogram heavyweight division. to conclude this session of boxing. You see there on the top left, the reigning Olympic champion, the five-time world champion, Julio Cesar La Cruz of Cuba, preparing to make his world championship debut as a heavyweight. Remember in the most recent edition in Yekaterinburg two years ago, he was down at 81 kilograms, going in search of his fifth world title came away with a bronze in that, in that edition after that defeat he moved up to 92 kilograms heavyweight or 91 as it was in the tokyo olympic games so first up after a walkover in our first schedule contest between boxers from germany and india the india boxer akash kumar getting that walkover victory salah ibrahim omar not able to make it to the ring so it's akash kumar of india who progresses through to the round of 16 in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. So 30 boxes comprise the 54 kilogram bracket. Only two men receiving buys in the round of 32. The rest of them will be in action, although of course not Akash Kumar or Salah Ibrahim Omar. The boxer from India, who was coming out of the blue corner, prevailing on a walkover after an injury was sustained by the German boxer. Oh, fighting out of the red corner is the Ukrainian boxer Elmir Nabiev. His opponent is Joel Finol of Venezuela. So just final moments of instruction and direction of the World Championship, de J Championship debutant Elmir Nabiev. The old final, very experienced operator at this level, just having his equipment checked. And 
Mr. Nagi Osman. Just asked whether the boxers want to touch gloves. They do so sportingly, and we're about ready to get this fifth day in the afternoon session underway. We're in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. This is action from the first preliminary round, the round of 32 featuring boxers from Ukraine and Venezuela. The shorter of the two boxers wearing red is the Ukrainian athlete, Elmir Nabiev, 21 years of age, comes to the ring as the reigning national champion of Ukraine. It's his first appearance in a tournament of this magnitude. The overwhelming majority of his contest have taken place in his homeland. His opponent, on the other hand, Joel Finol, very experienced operator, 25 years of age, two-time Olympian, was an Olympic bronze medalist in Rio. Swinging left hand not too far away from Nabiev. This is his third appearance at an Aiba World Boxing Championships, having boxed in the 2015 edition in Doha, as he scores with a good southpaw left to the body, and most recently in Yekaterinburg. But that Olympic bronze in Rio was a really impressive run through to the podium for Finol. It's been a long wait for all of the boxers who are just getting underway today. The right hand attempted was blocked by the left of Nabiev, who is trying to stalk and close the distance against his taller opponent, opponent but Finol demonstrating good movement, holding his feet only momentarily, invariably darting into range, then out of range, then laterally left and right, scored with a good southpaw left just a few moments ago. And Nabiev, that left hand turning into a kidney punch as Finol was changing direction, looking for the backhand to the body once again, but he's got to quicken his feet here and maintain more pressure because at this juncture, Finol appears incredibly comfortable. And of course, there is a disparity in not only age, but experience as well. That right hand to the body was far closer from Elmir Nabiev. This very much a baptism of fire facing off against one of the top Aiba boxers over the years. You see him celebrate that left cross by raising that hand immediately after it landed. S flicking right jab gets between the high held hands of the Ukrainian boxer. There's a lashing left to the body, which again, Finol celebrates. So closing seconds of the opening round and Nabiev just hasn't been able to get up to speed with his opponent. That left hand wasn't too far away. But the man controlling the terms of the opening round is the taller man from Venezuela, the boxer in the blue corner. Very comfortable indeed over the course of that first three minutes for my money. Remember, Aiba life scoring is in effect. 10-point must system being implemented by the five scoring judges. All scores are considered and all five of the judges scoring in favor of the man from Venezuela. So it was Finol who was incredibly comfortable during the course of the opening round. Boxing on his own terms. Single shots coming from Nabiev on occasion. But he's going to have to try and do something different if he hopes for the outcome of the second round to be something other than it was in the first. So we go into the second round then. As well as all of his experience on the global stage, the old final was a member of the Venezuela Caciques in World Series Boxing, sharing the ring with some outstanding operator, Shaq Badin Zoyrov, who eliminated him at the semi-final stage in Rio five years ago. As he continues to pile up the points with accurate singles. Also shared the ring with two-time Olympic champion, Robbie C. Ramirez in World Series Boxing. To his credit, Nabiev trying to close the distance. 
But Finol always finding an avenue of escape. There's a good right hand over the top from Nabir. Perhaps his best shot of the entire contest. Counter right hand, which found the mark. So minute gone in the second round. Got to be careful that he doesn't just follow Finol around the ring. Nabiev. Got to try and cut the man off rather than just chase his shadow. And again, I'm sure that Nabiev is aware of all this given his steady progression through the domestic scene in Ukraine. A series of podium finishes in the junior and youth ranks before finally claiming national championship gold in the senior ranks earlier this year. But this, a different level altogether. Tries to close the distance, heads threatening to come together as Finol tried to get himself off the ropes. Winding up for a big backhand was Finol, but couldn't find the range. Nabiev very correcting in his, in his approach, but he walked onto a southpaw right there as he was just thinking about letting his own hands go. But again, like so many other endeavors, it's all very well getting the rudiments down. But then as he goes through his career in Aiba boxing, Nabiev just got to have a little bit more of his own personality, his own flavor, some guile, some disguise. That will come with experience, of course, and what better place to gain experience as he runs into another two-shot salvo while trying to look for his own offense. Very competitive. There's nothing wrong with the man's spirit. Never stop pursuing his man. But again, not enough effective offense for him to take the round for my money. But how do the five scoring judges see it? He's in there competing. But not really for my money able to find a range. Well, two judges disagree with me and they've scored it 10-9 in Nabiev's favor. So crucially, with the 3-2 split in the second round, scored in favor of Finol. He leads 20 points to 18 on three of the five scorecards. It's tied, tied up 18 points apiece on the cards of judges one and three from Puerto Rico and England, respectively. So into the third and final round then. Now Biev just adds on a 3-2 split. in the second round. And so he needs a massive final round to overturn the 20 points to 18 deficit that he faces on the cards of judges two, four, and five. Looking for that backhand once again, which was his best shot of the entire contest when he landed it in round two. There's a straight right hand to the body. Fenol is trying to present the man with more movement now. Southpaw left is a scoring shot, even though it didn't have much power behind it. Two-shot combination, not too far away from Nabiev, even though his feet did appear to be in a little bit of a tangle. Being maneuvered back to the corner now by the ring craft and footwork of Finol. Hasn't really punished him when he's put him in that confined position, but he did land with a roundhouse southpaw left there. Coming forwards once again is Nabiev, but not able to close the distance and find the mark. Scoring right hand to the body from the man in red. Made to miss with his attempted one-two upstairs. Did get through with that right hand just a few moments ago. Looking for a flashy left uppercut now is Finol. And there's plenty of movement from Finol. He's put on the end of a two-shot combination there as he landed one single. But he's not letting his hands go with any great regularity, Yoel Fenol. 
keeping himself out of trouble. Perhaps, well, if his coaches have shared the information with him, thanks to Aiba Life scoring, aware of the fact that he's leading 2018 for three judges. And so just managing this third and final round, ensuring that he doesn't pick up an injury, damaged nose or a cut eye. You see him covering up to repel the attack produced by Nabiev there. But even though he's not punching with any great frequency, he's been very busy in this round, as Espinal, moving, dodging, darting, bobbing, weaving. For practically the entire two and a half minutes we're approaching in this final round. And all of that movement is keeping Nabiev occupied. He's let his hands go sparingly, has found a range as he did with that right hand there. Between the southpaw and orthodox box of the lead legs tangling, that's a good right hand from Nabiev. And again, Fenor's lack of punch output is presenting opportunities for the man in red. And when he was backed on the ropes, there was nowhere for him to escape to, and he was picked off by a right hand. There he comes back with a right jab of his own, but look at the backhand success for Nabiev who really has competed in spirited fashion. Right hand success once again from the more compact boxer. Entertaining contest to open this fifth day of action here in Belgrade. One suspects it will be Yo, Yo Finol going through to the round of 16. But a solid display from Elmir Nabiev. Rather cautious in the second round, was edged in the second on a 3-2 split. And then in the third, as his confidence continued to grow and he continued to pursue victory, did have success with right hands. Ladies and gentlemen, in the bout number 194, in the ring A, the winner on points by split decision is the boxer round of the blue corner. And there's confirmation of a split decision victory for Yoel Finol. Takes him through to the round of 16, his second preliminary round in this, his third world championship appearance, and that's how he did it. Well, battling back very impressively was the man from Ukraine, taking the second and third rounds for judges one and three from Puerto Rico and England. Quitted himself very well indeed, did this man. Slow start, ultimately proving costly. But perhaps to be expected, boxing outside of Ukraine for the first time in these early stages of his Aiba boxing career against a man who stood on the Olympic podium as a bronze medalist in Rio five years ago. Some of the action from our opening contest of day five here in Ring A. Our next contest is between boxers from Bulgaria and Spain. Our judges come from Italy, Canada, Korea, Sweden and Egypt. Seated all around the boxing ring, 10-point must system in effect. So making his way to the red corner is Daniel Asenov of Bulgaria.
I'm sure that Daniel Asenov will make his way to the red corner of the correct ring. In due course, his opponent is Gabriel Escobar of Spain. He'll be boxing out of the blue corner. So it's a fresh trim for Daniel Asenov. The steps in sprightly fashion to take up residence in the blue corner is Escobar. So Alexander Kamidov of Uzbekistan, the referee. And we are underway. 54 kilogram bantamweight action and what a contest we have in prospect here because it features, it features two men who know one another very well indeed. They hail from Bulgaria and Spain. The boxer wearing red is Daniel Asenov, part of an eight man Bulgarian boxing team, 24 years of age, good left jab landed by the boxer in blue, who's also part of an eight strong squad for Spain. And that is Gabriel Escobar, 25 years of age from Madrid. And these boxers have met one another three times before, facing off for the fourth time. The man in red won the first two to take Continental under 22 titles. And most recently, it was the man in blue who prevailed. So which way is this one going to go? Overall, the success favoring the man in red, the most recent victory going to Escobar. Always meeting in continental finals because Asanov's success is coming in the European under 22 event as Escobar goes to work with straight shots to the body. Escobar's victory came in the gold medal bout of the 2019 European Games in Minsk. So they know all about one another as Asanov trying to get busy with his hands. Counter left hand was rapid from Escobar and it found the mark as well. Both boxers keen to give away as little as possible. Good defense with the glove to deflect that right hand that came in by Asanov. And then that flicking right hand from Asanov just caused Escobar to lose balance. Good use of the right hand on the inside by Escobar. Escobar looking to lead off with regularity. But good defense with the gloves once again to block that shot from Asanov. And it's Escobar leading off. Asanov tries to initiate with a left hand to the body that wasn't too far away. Inside the final minute of the opening round as Escobar scores with another straight right to the body. Asanov tries with the same shot. Counter left hand in that exchange for my money was the best shot of the trade off. And there's a good right hand over the top from Escobar. And the counter left hand I was referring to came from the man in blue as well. Good work to the body from Asanov. And a counter right hand is a beautiful shot. As Asanov sprinting right back into the pocket, going in search of his reply. Backs up the man in blue to the corner. Very good round of boxing between these two experienced, skillful operators. I happen to think the man in blue edged it, but how will the judges see it? It was very close, very competitive between two boxers of high skill. And there's confirmation, a 4-1 split in favor of Escobar of Spain, the judge from Egypt, preferring the work of the man in red. Terrific opening round here in the round of 32 in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. And again, with no seeding, you've got an Olympic quarter finalist facing off 
against the former European champion. And here they are facing off in the first preliminary round. No rankings, no seedings in evidence here in Belgrade. A terrific shot selection from both boxers, but particularly Escobar. Good right hand on the start of, at the start of the round from Asenov. Look at both boxers stepping up the pace here in the opening 15 seconds of round two. But the defense is proving very difficult to penetrate. And maybe, maybe in a contest where the boxers are keen to give precious little away, somebody's going to have to sustain an attack here. Roll the dice and maybe take a little bit of risk. Good right hand from Escobar was an eye-catching shot. And it was accentuated by the fact that he stepped off as well. Asenov with a nudging left hook around the corner, went behind the right glove of the man in blue. Escobar in his second appearance in the World Championships, having made it through to the quarterfinals in 2017, and there he scores with a right hand once again. Asenov was a quarterfinalist two years ago, losing to Shakabuddin Zorov of Uzbekistan at the quarterfinal stage. It's his fourth appearance in the World Championships, and Escobar really encouraging himself and celebrating the successes that he's having. Good right hand to the body by Asenov. Escobar short to the mark because, excuse me, Asenov was short to the mark because Escobar's movement is very good it's when circling his man. There's a good right hand to the body from the man in red. Heads coming dangerously close together as both boxers were committing to attacks. Gloves blocking a lot of that cluster of punches from Escobar. Beautiful movement in the pocket. And Escobar celebrating that, playing Matador as he goes walk about and scores with a flicking left jab. Minute to go in the second round. Trip, trip hammer of a left jab catches the advancing Asenov. And then there's a spearing southpaw left as Escobar switching his feet. Now he's back in the right-handed stance, the orthodox stance, using all of the space of the ring. And he's making it very difficult indeed for the man in red to tag him cleanly. Good right hand to the body, then left hook to the head from Asenov. Escobar came back with a right hand of his own. Good movement in the pocket from Asenov. But again, the flicking punches as Asenov swinging and missing, did catch him with the left hand. Escobar found his way to center ring. Asenov literally ran after him in a bid to close the distance. Hard left hook was caught by the glove of Escobar. Good defenses once again as he put the knuckles up to his temple. Second round in the book. And a very good round of boxing produced by the man in blue. Make no mistake, Asenov is in it every punch of the way. But I think he's being edged here. Conceded the first on a 4-1 split. What will the judges tell him about the outcome of the second round? I happen to think that this man, Escobar, edged it. But how will the judges see it? And this time it's a clean sweep in favor of the Spanish boxer, Escobar, leading 20 points to 18 for judges one through four. It's all square on the card of judge number five from Egypt. One round apiece, 19 points apiece. But Escobar, his movement posing real difficulties for Asenov. And he simply can't catch the man cleanly on a consistent basis. Look at the movement off the ropes. And he knows what a difficult mission this is proving to be. He's got to go for broke now if he hopes to progress in this bantamweight tournament. Too much water on the face of Gabriel Escobar. A referee from Uzbekistan happy, and the contest resumes. And on the resumption of the contest, it's a jolting left jab, pistoned out by Escobar. He's spoken to about having to keep his head up. Remember, there was that brief cameo in the second round where he was dipped low at the knees and just bobbing and rolling beneath the punches that Esenov was trying to catch him with, but he didn't have any success. And why I mention that is that Escobar's head was dangerously close to dipping below the belt line of his opponent. He wasn't spoken to about it on that occasion, but he was spoken to about keeping his head up here in the second round. 
in the final round, excuse me. Good right hand to the body, landed by Astenov. Left hook upstairs is a successful shot from the man in red, but it was countered by the man in blue as Escobar continues to move terrifically in the pocket. Almost lost his footing there as he went to back up towards the ropes and the perimeter of the ring. And perhaps just to buy himself some time, he initiated a clinch. Solid left hand to the body from Asenov on the resumption, looking to slow down the movement that has served Escobar so well in the first two rounds. Left hand landed with the inside of the glove, and again the defences of Escobar sturdy because that right hand that came bombing in there it is again it's being caught by the glove of the man in blue so not scoring punches and that's a cleverly picked right hand to the body from Escobar who is continuing to select his shots beautifully Asenov comes back with a left hand to the body of his own double left hand upstairs is caught by the defenses of the man in blue once again body shots, body shots exchanged between the two boxers and then it's physical as Escobar clamped up his man and wouldn't release him. Left hand success downstairs for Asenov, who's continuing to press, looking for the massive final round and the inside the distance finish that he needs. Escobar's got to watch himself here because if he picks up a warning, that would change the complexion of the contest entirely. And it's becoming increasingly physical. No love lost between these two, remember. This the fourth time they're sharing a boxing ring. And it's a keenly contested rivalry between the two of them. But with less than a minute to go, unless Asenov can do something drastic and dramatic, it's going to be all square at two victories apiece, with Escobar having taken the two most recent editions of this tetralogy. Beautiful right hand off the ropes from Escobar, who is now using the space of the ring to frustrate Asenov by maintaining the gap between them. Asenov simply can't close the distance to land leather on his opponent, made to miss once again, and Escobar up on his toes, just dancing this one out now, seeing it over the line, trying to close the gap with a desperate last bull rush is Asenov, but he's not going to get it done. Another clinch initiated by Escobar, very clever boxing indeed by the man in blue. And look at the difference in body language. Asenov back to his red corner with his head bowed. And it was an altogether more confident strut, full of swagger by the man from Madrid as he made his way back to the blue corner. He knows he's done enough. And I think he has taken this one. Maybe a 4-1 split, but I think it's going to be a unanimous decision. What say the judges at the conclusion of that bout? So Gabriel Escobar gets a victory over his familiar rival. A unanimous points win over Daniel Asenov. Wonderful to see that camaraderie and sportsmanship between the boxer and the coaches of his opponent. Very good display by Gabriel Escobar. His movement served him terrifically over the course of the three three-minute rounds. Asenov was in it, but never doing enough to convince the judges to vote in his favor. A very good display by the man from Madrid. And it's Gabriel Escobar who evens up this four fight series at two wins apiece. And he's won the last two of them. He goes through to the round of 16 in the men's 54 kilogram bantamweight division. Our next contest is between boxers from Brazil and Nicaragua. Our judges come from Guatemala, Puerto Rico, Thailand, Japan, and Turkey.
So making his way to the boxing ring is Mikhail Trinidade. He'll be boxing out of the red corner. His opponent is Nelson Guerrero. So Sandor Babai is our third man in the ring from Hungary. And we are underway in this preliminary round contest in the round of 32 in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. Boxers from the Americas going head to head. The man wearing red is Mikael Trinidade. Part of a 10-strong Brazilian boxing team, just 20 years of age, world championship debut for him, as it is on the senior level for the man who has just had his chin clipped by a left hand, and that is Nelson Guerrero of Nicaragua, the sole representative of the Nicaraguan boxing team. His chin's up in the air at the moment, and Trinidade is looking for it. Counter right hand not too far away from Guerrero. Just 19 years of age, world championship debut for him. Although I did see him compete, when I was commentating at the World Youth Championships in Kielce in Poland earlier this year. There he lands a clipping left hand, was eliminated in the second preliminary round, and there's a nice raking left jab from the taller boxer, wearing blue. Looking to establish that lead left. Left hook catches him though, as after Trin Trinidade was off the mark, with his overhand right. Solid left jab landed by the Brazilian boxer in red. So beyond the midpoint of this opening round, pecking, poking left jabs, an effective shot from Guerrero. He possesses such terrific range and reach, and he's able just to catch the advancing Trinidade with it as he's coming forwards. Hands clamped to the side of his head there, but when he looks to let his hands go, watch the wind-up, particularly with the backhand, draws it way back. And while he was doing that on previous occasions, he was just caught by a feather duster of a left jab from Guerrero such as that. So Trinidade not really accurate with his attempted assault. Guerrero content to spend a lot of time with his back on the ropes. His three-shot combination short of the mark. Pressing forwards is Trinidade, but again, not getting himself into distance to land with any consistency. Here's the disruptive jab once again, but that right hand left hook combination was certainly on the mark, and that results in a trade-off and a right hand from Trinidade dips the knees of Nelson Guerrero. And the referee intervenes to issue a mandatory eight count. My goodness, both men were swinging for the fences during that exchange. And it was Guerrero who landed a big backhand right on the chin. And fighting his way back with left hooks is Guerrero. Action heating up in the closing stages of the opening round. My goodness. A standing count produced by a solid overhand right from Mikael Trinidade. And an eight count issued against this man who prior to that tear up was scoring with a jab, but it's 10-8 for two of the judges in favor of Trinidade. A unanimous verdict at the conclusion of the first round. Three scores of 
two of 10-8 in favor of Trinidad. Again, a heavier shot landing from the man in red. And then during the dramatic trade-off at the end, there was the right hand and a left hook followed it as well. Did well to stand his feet, did Guerrero. But he came right back. So into the second round we go then. Nicaragua produced some outstanding boxers over the years. Perhaps none more so than the explosive thin man Alexis Arguello. The late great Alexis Arguello. And unsurprisingly, he has a national cup named after him in his homeland. And this man, Nelson Guerrero, won it last year in the 52 kilogram category. Good left hand landed by Trinidad. And of course, Brazil, such an emerging Olympic style Aiba boxing nation. The Falcao brothers with success as another left hand crashes home from Trinidad after he took a left hand to the body from Guerrero. But the Falcao brothers, Robson Conceicao, Herbert Carvalho, Abner Tejera, so many outstanding boxers as another right hand from Trinidad disrupts. And then a left hand crashes home. And another one, it was with the inside of the glove, that final left hook. But it was solid enough to shake Guerrero down to his boots. And he takes a second standing count. Approaching the midpoint of the second round, Trinidad back into range, going in search of his man once again, isn't it? A clinch in the space of the ring. Remember, no limit on the number of counts in a contest, but there is a limit on the number of counts overall. And in each of the two rounds, Guerrero has taken a standing count so far. Good right hand while on the move from Guerrero. But his defense is rather open and there's a right uppercut left hook success where Trinidad, Trinidad just helped himself and that left hook shook the man down to the soles of his boots. And I wouldn't be surprised if this one is waved off. Second standing count of the round issued and there it is. Guerrero absolutely crestfallen. He stopped in the second round, but he was being hit hard and often by Mikael Trinidad of Brazil. The boxer from Nicaragua, his defense is too porous. And that was exploited in efficient fashion by Mikael Trinidad. Heavy leather landing on a regular basis. And Nelson Guerrero stopped in the second round. Nicaragua's interest in the 2021 World Boxing Championships comes to an end. The one-man team eliminated here in the round of 32. Let's get the official announcement. Possesses a nice lead left hand, does the man in blue. But that was the shot which caused the referee to issue the second standing count of the round, the third of the contest. And it's Trinidad who goes through to the round of 16. Up next are boxers from Kenya and Turkey. Our judges scoring this one come from Egypt, Moldova, Bulgaria, Canada, and Kazakhstan. Ladies 
Chris and Chapman. We now proceed with the bout number 197 in the ring A in a man's at weight division. Ringside judges from Egypt, Republic of Moldova, Bulgaria, Canada, and Kazakhstan. Referee in the ring, Chan Yu Li, Chinese Taipei. Gentlemen, please be ready to welcome first, fighting out on the red corner, the boxer representing Kenya, Shafi Hassan. So there is Shafi Hassan making his way to the red corner. The Kenyan boxer confidently approaching the boxing ring. His opponent is Mohamed Sachli of Turkey. He'll be boxing out of the blue corner. So our referee calls both boxers to stand to ring to give them their final instructions. <laughs> Chang Yu Ling of Chinese Taipei is the official in charge. We're in the round of 32 in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division, the first preliminary round of the tournament and this contest between boxers from Kenya and Turkey. The boxer wearing red is Hassan Shafri. 28 years of age, competing in his second world championships, having boxed in 2017 in Hamburg, but the man bombing away behind a southpaw left, resulting in a furious exchange near the ropes, which results in a standing count, is Mohamed Sachli of Turkey. The 19-year-old from Istanbul out aggressively and taking it to his opponent. Skips across the boxing ring, looking to close the distance once again. Whips in a hard left hand. That doubled over Shafi. Shafi trying to fire back, but again, he's remaining pinned to the ropes. He takes a left hook upstairs from the south pour in blue. He's gone from the ropes on one side of the ring to the ropes on the perpendicular side of the ring. Now he gets on his toes and tries to just get himself together after being nearly overwhelmed in the opening half of the round. There's a good attack to the body from Shafi. Comes to the ring as the reigning All-Africa Games silver medalist. Well, he's taken a knee voluntarily. He's saying that he's injured after taking that shot around the clavicle. That's where it appeared to land, and I don't think the man's going to be able to continue. He puts his hands up just in time, but that's going to be huge encouragement. Remember, three standing counts in a round, and the contest is over, and Satchley is going in pursuit of it. Dropping his hands contemptuously now. Back towards the ropes once again is Safi, and the contest has been waved off just beyond the two-minute mark. Well, Hassan Safi was run over there by Mohamed Sachli from Turkey, who came charging out of the gate, set about his man, and never allowed him to settle into the contest. You can see it appears to be some type of discomfort in and around the neck area that is troubling Shafi. 
It was a cluster of punches that caused the referee to issue the second standing, the first standing count. On the second one, there was a shot which landed around the neck, around the clavicle area. He voluntarily took a knee. And then on the resumption, well, he never got himself back into the contest. Let's get the verdict. So the reigning Turkish national champion, Mohamed Sachli, with a first round stoppage just beyond the two minute mark, issuing two standing counts, the referee deciding to wave it off. And let's hope that Hassan Shafi is okay because he appeared to be in a little bit of distress, complaining of discomfort in the neck area. But it was a blistering start by Sachli. And he never let his man off the hook once he brought about that standing count with the furious flurry that he produced practically from the opening belt. Our next contest is between boxers from Scotland and the Russian Boxing Federation. Our judges come from Netherlands, Guatemala, Puerto Rico, Uzbekistan and Sweden. Ladies and gentlemen, we now bring your attention to the ring A, where we present you the belt number 198 in a men's bantam weight division. Ringside judges from Netherlands, Guatemala, Puerto Rico, Uzbekistan, and Sweden. Referee in the ring A, Sasaki Yasutaka, Japan. So shadow boxing his way to the ring is Matthew McHale of Scotland. He'll be fighting out of the red corner. His opponent is from the Russian Boxing Federation, Kurdban Baidan Bekov. He'll be fighting out of the blue corner.
Yasutaka Sasaki of Japan is our referee. This contest in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division is between boxers from Scotland and the Russian Boxing Federation. The taller figure who's getting to work behind a stiff left jab is Matthew McHale, 25 years of age from Edinburgh, the Scottish capital. His opponent is Kurban Bayrambekov, 20 years of age, the reigning Russian national champion, part of a full strength, 13 strong. Russian Federation boxing team. They have a fighter in each of the 13 weight classes. Six men are here representing Scotland. The left hooks exchange by Rambekov's upstairs. Mikhail's down to the body. Oh, it's a hands down style from by Rambekov. He was picked off by a left jab there before he attempted to counter with shots to the body. By Rambekov short with his attempted straight shots. And it's McHale in centre ring. There's a good right hand. He's taken over the top and a whipping left hand to the body from the hands down fists of Baidan Bekov. Terrific punch picking in that portion of the round for the man in blue. And now he's getting to work with body shots once again right on the belt line while McHale's back was to the ropes. So contrasting styles making for a wonderful first half of this opening round. Beautiful left jab from McHale, as straight as an arrow, right down the pipe. And then he comes back with a left hand to the body, left jab upstairs. Both men enjoying success in this opening round. Double left hand is off the mark from Biden Bekov, and he takes a jab in response. By Biden Bekov comes back with a jab of his own before being fed another two. And there's a left right success for Biden Bekov. Just over a minute to go in this opening round. What a round so far between two skillful boxers. Completely different approaches as Mikhail tags his man with a right hand and then spears him with a left jab. Less than a minute to go in round number one. Big swing and a miss from his kneecap from Biden Bekov. Left hand to the body was a little closer to the mark from the man in blue. There's an untidy tangle. Mikhail reluctant to let his opponents go. The head come to, heads come together. And then the two men lock eyes on one another. As if to say, OK, I see you. Let's continue to do this. 30 seconds to go in the opening round. That's a good change of angle. Then a hard left hand driven in by Baden Bekov. He momentarily turns southpaw to land that shot. Comes forward with a cluster of shots that were successful at mid-range. Mikhail keeping a watchful eye on him. A hard shot dug in by the man in red. It was a flashing right hand and then another disruptive straight shot landed by Mikhail. Looking for right hand success once again. Byron Bekov with that characteristic hands down style, but he was touched up there as he got the came off second best in that exchange. It was first and third boxing from Mikhail. And the two men punching right up to and perhaps beyond the bell to conclude round number one. What a round, my goodness. Both men enjoying success during the course of a first three-minute stand that was fought at a furious pace. And a 4-1 split in favor of Bayram Bekov. Mikhail can perhaps consider himself a little bit unfortunate there because he was in it every punch, every second of the way in what was a blistering opening round. But that's a beautiful right hand landed by Bayram Bekov. There he went to work to both head and body. Both boxers enjoying plenty of success. So a 4-1 split in favor of the man in the blue corner. So we go into the second round. It's the first world championship appearance for both of these boxers. Matthew McHale, three Scottish national titles in his, under his belt, two British titles under his belt. Where it's been a steady climb to the podium. And remember, this title that Biden Beckhoff has taken on that steady climb to top spot on the podium is the senior championship, and he's only 20 years of age. Did he would put on the end of a rapier like right cross? from Mikhail. Byron Bekov takes another stiff left jab. Now he puts his hands up as he edges his way into punching range. The referee reminding Byron Bekov to keep his head up. 
Working out of the southpaw stance now is the man in blue. Switches his feet back to orthodox. Good right hand slammed into the body by Mikhail. Then dipped underneath to avoid the counter. Working away with the free right hand. The heads rubbing vigorously on the inside. Each man trying to work with their free hand. And both men went for a sneaky jab as they looked to disengage. Approaching the midpoint of round number two. There's a good two-shot combination from Byron Bekov. Final right hand in that cluster did get through for the man in blue. Mikhail lets two shots go. Couldn't quite find the mark. Mikhail operating out of centre ring. Biden back off in the space of ring centre as well. Good right hand to the body during that exchange as Biden back off goes body hunting once again. Mikhail back to the perimeter. That's a solid left hand with Byron Bekoff in the southpaw stance. He drives through a left cross which catches Mikhail flush. But he retained his boxing stance. He's got his wits about him and he's looking to re-enter the fray. Minute to go in this second round. Glancing right hand perhaps from Mikhail. There he looks for the same shot once again. Biden Bekov short of the mark with his attempted backhand. There's another left hand success and then a hard left hand driven into the body of Mikhail from Biden Bekov. Some hard punches being traded between these two boxers. Biden Bekov switching his feet at center ring as he was disengaging. Takes a cracking right cross from Mikhail. Good right hook landed by Biden Bekov. Burst of punches concludes with a good left hand to the body. Mikhail trying to shove his man off with the shoulder as they come together. Neither man working on the inside. Referee doesn't intervene physically. But the boxers ultimately disengage. Tempting with the feet, fainting with the feet is Mikhail. He scores with a left jab. Dancing laterally, left and right. Looks for a right uppercut off the ropes. Busy burst of punches from Byron Bekov. A couple got through, but then Mikhail came back with a two-shot counter of his own. What a round, my goodness. Outstanding non-stop two-way action between these two boxers. Mikhail was edged on a 4-1 split at the conclusion of the op opening round. How will the judges score that second round, which was fought at a furious pace once again? And Mikhail has turned it around to sweep it unanimously. My goodness, everything to box for. Going into the third and final round. Absolutely terrific response from Matthew Mikhail. After conceding the first round on a 4-1 split, he worked wonderfully off his jab. And took the second round across the board. That was a solid left hand landed by Biden Bekov. So we go into the third and final round of a bantamweight bout. That is in the balance. Matthew McHale, three-time national champion of Scotland, has the momentum after taking the second round unanimously. But make no mistake, Biden Bekov in it every step of the way, just as McHale. Oh, now that's naughty. My goodness. A clear command of break from the referee. And Byron Bekoff uncoiled a ferocious left hook. Good use of the left hand from Mikhail. While the Hollywood shots are coming from Byron Bekoff, Mikhail just poking out that left hand. There he went for a flashy bolo right hand, but it didn't find the mark. Physical on the inside. Both boxes looking to work away. Byron Bekoff with shoe shine shots and a double left hand to end that exchange. Bobbing and weaving in the pocket once again as both men enjoy success with the straight shots they put out. Minute gone in the third and final round. The contest in the balance. Left hand not too way far away from Byron Bekoff. As his accuracy decreases there. Nice spinning off the line from Mikhail to keep himself in punching range as he went in search of his counter. Beautiful left jab that he pushed off the back foot with from Mikhail. Found the mark. Both men off the mark as Mikhail dipped to initiate a brief clinch. Left-right combination. Perhaps just getting through the gloves of Byron Bekov, who is continuing to swing, but his accuracy just decreasing a little bit here. His accuracy. Beautiful work with the left hand from Mikhail. Continues to pile up the points. Keep Byron Bekov occupied and disrupt his attempt at advance. We're beyond the midpoint of the third and final round. And there's a jab in evidence once again from the man in red. Yeah. 
So this one becoming attritional now. The boxers testing the strength of one another at close range. Nice right hand lead from McHale. Turns a beautiful right uppercut underneath. Another tangle. Big intake of breath from Kurban Biden Bekov. Oh, what a right hand. That's a beautiful shot from McHale. Caught the man in blue coming in and stopped him in his tracks. Well, it's been a brilliant third round of boxing from my Matthew McHale. He's got to keep his concentration if he hopes to see this one over the line because Byron Bekoff possesses pop on his own punches and could produce something dramatic in the closing stages. That was a solid left jab landed by Byron Bekoff. He'll have a sense better than anybody that this round hasn't gone his way. Takes another stiff left hand from McHale. Still in search of the shot to finish this contest. Up on his toes, measuring his man. Putting out the left jab once again. Takes a left hook, does McHale. And this one sees the boxers tussling right up until the final bell. What a contest. And nice to see that respect between two boxers who combined to produce a brilliant spectacle here in Belgrade. But I think it's the man in the other corner, Matthew McHale, who will be declared as the victor here. It was a very good start by Byron Beckoff. As it was for McHale, he conceded the first on a 4-1 split, took the second unanimously. And then in the third and final round, again, his trusty left hand served him very well indeed. And he uncorded a cracking right cross, perhaps the best shot of the entire contest. Let's get the official verdict. I think McHale's going through. And there is confirmation, and just look at what it means to Matthew McHale, a unanimous points decision victor over the reigning Russian national champion. Kurdban Biden Bekov played his part in what was a terrific contest. But how about that for a turnaround? Four scorecards, five scorecards of 29 28, but all five of them in favor of Matthew McHale, the three time Scottish national champion and two time British champion. A fair reflection of how close the con contest was, but the right man has won because despite the brisk start by Kurdman Biden Bekov, it was the left hand and shot selection of McHale that saw him respond magnificently in the second round to take it unanimously, and he repeated that in the third. Matthew McHale of Scotland goes through to the second preliminary round in this, his first Aiba World Championship appearance. Brilliant contest, very good performance. Next up is a contest between boxers from Korea and Kazakhstan. Our judges come from Canada, Egypt, Chinese Taipei, Thailand and Italy. So Kim in Q making his way towards the red corner. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome in the blue corner of the ring, the boxer representing the Republic of Kazakhstan, Mahmoud Samir Khan. His opponent is Mahmoud Sabir Khan. He'll be boxing out of the blue corner.
So Yuri Lyubarsky of Ukraine is the referee. And he calls time to get this contest underway. It's an all-Asian encounter between boxers from Korea and Kazakhstan. The taller boxer operating out of the southpaw stance is Kim Inq, 28 years of age. His opponent is just 20, Mahmoud Sabrikan. Part of a maximum size 13 deep Kazakhstan boxing team. He's got to try and find a way to get inside the reach of his much taller opponent. First senior world championship appearance for the man who has just scored with a long right hand to the body. That's the more compact Sabir Khan. Oh, and a left jab causes Kim in to become disorganized. Took a trip to the canvas. I think the lead legs tangled, to be fair. But again, a left jab did catch the southpaw while the legs were entwined. No knockdown. And the contest resumes. Both of these men have stood on a world championship podium before. Third appearance for Kim in Q in 2017. He was a bronze medalist, winning three contests out of four in the 52 kilogram division. And a year later in the World Youth Championships, it was a bronze medal finish for Sabir Khan. Terrific use of the feet from Sabir Khan. Look at that, so characteristic of some outstanding Kazakh boxers down the years and look at the pot shot successes he's having as he's bobbing and weaving in the pocket. There was an exchange, but look at the work through the middle from this comparatively diminutive, speedy little boxer. Terrific work, daring his man to let his hands go, but then using quick feet to close the distance. Wonderful variety, and it was a terrific portion of the round for Sabir Khan. Nice right uppercut before disengaging from Sabir Khan. Again, rapier, quick left hand. My goodness, that is rapid. And despite his advantage in height and range and reach, Kim has been beaten to the punch on a fairly consistent basis through this portion of the round. Same once again. Triggering off first was Kim, but the counter from the man in blue is lightning quick. Left hand to the body from Kim may be an attempt to try and slow the man down, but then he was countered by a shot underneath. And look at the success. There's left jabs and right crosses coming out of the orthodox stance from this brilliant little switch hitter. A terrific display. Spins off the line to get back to the space of center in. Closing seconds of round number one. Now he's operating as a southpaw, uses the shoulder to protect that chin. What a blistering round of boxing produced by Mahmoud Sabri Khan. Absolutely sensational stuff. Threatening to bamboozle the 2017 World Championship bronze medalist, Kim in Q. At times must have felt as though he was surrounded. Outstanding performance by Sabri Khan. But how will the judges see it? Well, 10-9 across the board, unanimously in favor of the 20-year-old from Shimkent. Look at some of the action. Kim was trying to establish straight shots, but then, well, there was the tangle of legs, but you can see that a left jab landed clearly to send the man down to the floor. No knockdown rule, but then it was around this portion of the round. Look at the variety. Look at the speed and accuracy from Sabir Khan. Terrific work. Every punch in the book. And Kim in Q was on the receiving end of most of them, which found a home during that successful period of the round. So we go into the second round then. Kim in Q, as well as that World Championship bronze in 2017, made his debut in Sabir Khan's homeland in the 2013 edition of the Aiba World Boxing Championships, quarter finalist down at 49 kilograms on that occasion. But Sabri Khan looking to increase the tempo once again. Well, 
any boxing aficionado look at the head of Kim being jolted back again when he's letting his hands go before his punch is fully extended. You see the head snapping backwards, such is the speed of Sabir Khan and he's closing the distance from going out of range and he's in range. All of that happening while Kim is looking for his own shots. It's breathtaking to behold from Sabir Khan. Scoring to both body and head with every punch in the book. Look at the disorganization he's bringing about on Kim. His hand was outside of the ropes. Then he was worked over to the body. He's trying to find a range. But again, Sabir Khan, such a small target. There he was caught by a corkscrew right hand. But the overwhelming success coming from the man in blue. This is remarkable to behold. Lightning quick. And given the disparity in size, you can see that he's got a terrific set of wheels on him. Has Sabir Khan as he scores with a reverse one-two out of the orthodox stance. But one wonders whether he could actually move down in weight. But you can see against the towering figure of Kim, he's actually making an asset of his lack of inches. Because he's very difficult to tag cleanly. Dips at the knees, bobs, weaves, rolls. And working the man to body and head once again, maintaining a terrific pace with two minutes 20 gone in this opening round. Kim reduced to swinging and missing. Cannot find a target against this elusive Kazakh switch hitter. Beautiful right hand again twice. And there's a vocal Kazakhstan contingent in attendance here at the Stark Arena. They've got a loud hailer. Left hand success from Kim, but he's cutting a rather frustrated figure here now. Better of that exchange going in favor. The man in blue once again. Right uppercut, left hook. A successful shot from Sabir Khan. Oh my goodness. A perfect punctuation point to conclude that second round. Kim missing with a straight shot. And while he was off the mark, a check left hand was dug in by Sabir Khan, who was out of range because he was stepping off the line. What a blistering second round produced by the four-time national champion of Kazakhstan. Sensational. And as a result, we've got two scorecards returned of 10-8. A fair reflection for my money of what we witnessed in that second round. Absolutely astonishing to behold. oozing confidence going about his work and look at that hitting without reply Kim enjoying sporadic success but his accuracy must be so low because more often than not he's let his hands go and hasn't found the target so we go into the third and final round then and Kim in Q has conceded both rounds completed unanimously 10-9 across the board in the first round. Two scorecards of 10-8 returned in round number two. He is trailing by some distance as Sabir Khan scores with a two-shot salvo to the body. But that, what we just saw there, has been Kim Inkyu's night in a nutshell, made to miss and then picked off by a single southpaw left. Right hand on an upward trajectory from this man who explodes upwards like he's springing out of a jack-in-the-box. It's been a brilliant display, one to take the breath away. And Kim in cue, well, he's still going for it. You have to credit the man's commitment. But every time he lets his hands go, look at the price he's paying. Flicking shots coming out from the belt line. And just catching the man, just like that right jab there. Blistering speed of hand and foot from Mahmoud Sabir Khan. Four national titles coming at each of the classification, <laughs> classifications available to him. Schoolboy title back in 2015. Junior title in 2017 as he tags his man cleanly once again. A youth title two years ago followed by his first senior title last year. Was eliminated in the first preliminary round of the Asian Senior Championships in Dubai. Here he is on the senior global stage for the first time. 
and he is acquitting himself magnificently. Good right hand to the body by Kim. But again, it's such a difficult target to try and pick off. If you didn't know any better, you would think that this is a catchweight contest. And these two boxers are from different weight divisions. Look at the price Kim has to pay as he landed that roundhouse right. Uppercut is a beautiful shot. And Kim, while he's being bamboozled here, all angled attack being produced by Sabir Khan. And I think that Kim could grow another set of arms and would still have trouble fending off these attacks. They're coming from such a variety of angles and at such blistering speed, like that left hand there. His chin has been touched up repeatedly, Kim in Q, but he's still in there competing. And the man deserves immense credit for that. He's showing plenty of toughness, no little desire, and unquenchable fighting spirit in his bid to progress through to the round of 16 in the bantamweight division. But it's not his night or his afternoon because it's the afternoon session here in Belgrade. And look at the walk back to the red corner from Kim. He must be wondering what he's been in the ring with because it's a whirlwind from Kazakhstan named Mahmoud Sabir Khan. A terrific performance, completely outclassing the 2017 World Championship bronze medalist. And the coach having to say, well, listen, it's one of those things. Hasn't been your day. Let's get the official verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, in the bout number 199 in the ring A, the winner on points by unanimous decision is the boxer out of the blue corner. And there is confirmation of a unanimous point decision verdict for Mahmoud Sabir Khan. Look at the margin of victory. No warnings were issued in this contest, but such was the dominance demonstrated by the four-time national champion of the Central Asian nation that he put clear daylight between himself and the 2017 World Championship bronze medalist, the 2019 Asian Continental silver medalist, comprehensively outboxed by this speedy little switch hitter from Kazakhstan. He romps his way through to the second preliminary round and we'll see him in action again on the 31st of October in the afternoon session. Matthew McHale will be in the other corner and what a contest that promises to be between Scotland's McHale and Kazakhstan's Sabir Khan. So Saban Magomedov, the Serbian boxer, receiving a rousing reception on his way to the blue corner.
Nagi Osman of Egypt has issued the final instructions. We are in the heavyweight division and this is action from the second preliminary round of the heavyweight tournament. 38 boxers comprise the bracket. So we had a few contests in the round of 64. This one between boxers from Brazil and Serbia. And the boxer wearing red, tucking up tightly to repel this attack, is Abner Tejera da Silva. Competing in his second world championships, having boxed in Yekaterinburg two years ago. And he is the reigning Olympic Games bronze medalist, eliminated at the semi-final stage by the man who went on to take gold, Julio Cesar La Cruz of Cuba in Tokyo a few months ago. The man on the front foot, boxing for Serbia, is Sadam Magomedov. 29 years of age, part of a 12-strong Serbian boxing team and comes to the ring as the reigning Serbian national champion. Second bout of the tournament for Magomedov. Won on a split decision over Amir Buyukdag of Turkey in the round of 64. Tejera received a bite in the first preliminary round. So on this, the fifth day of competition, it's his first bout of the tournament. And he's a man who likes to control the tempo of a bout. Good right hand to the body, nudged in by Magomedov. Hooks around the corner, got through. There's a good right hand to the body and then a left uppercut through the middle from Tejira. But this one being fought at close range as both men trying to tuck up to repel the onslaught of their opponent and demonstrating the art of fighting on the inside with bent arm shots, hooks and uppercuts, trying to prise open the guard of the man they're boxing against. Well, not particularly accurate there, but he kept the attack going, did Magomedov, and there's a minute to go <laughs> in this round. And just while Magomedov is getting his guard reorganized, Tejera was across the ring looking to work him over, but he couldn't quite find the accuracy with his work. Uppercut on the inside from Magomedov. Good work to the body from Tejera. Terrific punch picking downstairs from the South pouring red. So Magomedov looking to bob and weave his way back into range. Right hook was partially blocked by the forearm of Tejera. Magomedov swing and missing. There's a nick around his left eye. They have been caused by the flashing right hook. There's a good right hook from Magomedov, who then looks to take it to Tejera, who's content to sit on the ropes, took a hard body shot. Very dangerous practice to cut away from boxing at any time, but particularly when you've got 92 kilogram heavyweight boxers in the ring. I can see what's going on from my commentary position here ringside. But this contest could come to an end at any moment when you've got punches of this caliber sharing a boxing ring. First round in the book, very competitive round where both men showed their prowess at short and mid-range. Well, there's evidence of the nick around the left eye of Magomedov and Tejera taking the first round on a 4-1 split, excuse me, a 3-2 split. The judges from Hungary and Kazakhstan preferring the work of Magomedov. Well, it was nip and tuck back and forth throughout. Both men enjoying successes on the inside. Plenty of shots defended effectively as both men climbed inside their gloves and forearms. As we move into the second round. Good work to the body by Tejera da Silva. Increasing the distance now, but look at the right hand success from Magomedov, who kept the attack going. And now Tejera looking to box out of the corner, but he gets caught by a left hook while he's firing away. Good double jab to keep Magomedov occupied. May not have scored, but it prevented him from punching. Nice movement in the pocket and a wonderfully picked right uppercut, followed by a left uppercut. Terrific work in the corner from Tejera. 
bobbing and weaving near the corner post and letting two uppercuts go, one from each hand. Terrific portion of the round for him. So minute gone in the second round. Brilliant moment of quality produced by the man in red a few moments ago, but then Magomedov comes back with a straight shot salvo of his own. Oh, that's a solid left hand thundered in by Magomedov and Tejera was just keen to hold on and get himself off the ropes. It may have landed with the inside part of the glove to render it a slap, but make no mistake, it had plenty of pop on it. So beyond the halfway stage of round number two, Tejera looking to hook his way out of the corner, but Magomed reciprocates with the same shot in this all Southpaw encounter in the second preliminary round of action here at the World Championships in Belgrade. Very patient boxer is Tejeri as he goes looking for the left uppercut once again. Bobbing and weaving to make the man miss was Magomedov. He came back with a corkscrew right hand, but it was off the mark. So nice use of the legs from Tejera, keeping his composure wonderfully in the boxing ring. Right hook may have got around the rear of the left glove of Tejera from the Serbian boxer. Good use of the left hand. It snaked in between the defenses of Tejera. He, he fires back with work to the body. Nice right hand from Magomedov leading off, but he was countered immediately by a right jab from Tejera. It's another close round once again. Remember, the first one edged on a 3-2 split in favor of the reigning Olympic bronze medalist. But he likes to work at a very slow tempo, does Tejera. Very patient, very efficient, keeping his core magnificently under fire, bobbing and weaving and laying back to ensure none of those shots from Magomedov got through on that forward foray. He then responded with some work to the body. Very good round indeed, both men enjoying success. I happen to think that the man in red edged that second round, but this man was in it every step of the way. So remember the first, a 3-2 split in favor of Tejera, but Magomedov has taken the second round 4-1. So look at that. We have got four scorecards of 19 points apiece going into the third and final round. It has all come down to this. And perhaps the fact that Tejera is boxing principally off the back foot and Sadar Magomedov has been the aggressor, maybe that was the determining factor in see him take, seeing him take the second round on a 4-1 split. Here we saw that southpaw left. He thundered home just a few moments ago. During the replay sequence. So it has all come down to a three-minute shootout between two quality southpaws here on the World Championship stage in Belgrade. The reigning Serbian national champion, Sadar Magomedov, is looking to draw inspiration from the support he's receiving from this vocal crowd in the Stark Arena. He fires a left hook around the corner. As well as being the reigning Serbian national champion, Sadar Magomedov, who's initiating a trade-off once again, took three consecutive national titles in Russia in 15, 16 and 17 and 91 kilogram heavyweight division. Bronze medalist in the 2015 European Games, which was the first time I saw him when I was commentating on that tournament. Really is a handful. Terrifically conditioned, incredibly determined. He's looking to bring those qualities to bear against the reigning Olympic bronze medalist who is continuing to peck and poke on the back foot. But given the way that second round has been scored, remember there's Aiba live scoring. So Tejera will be aware of this. And I'm not sure boxing in this manner is going to be enough to get it done. He's going to have to produce some really eye-catching work and perhaps on a sustained basis, because all of here, see, where Magomedov is scoring with hooks to the body and uppercuts through the middle, Tejera is not responding. He tries to now. He gets through a single left hand to the body, but he takes a right jab. And so you have to say the better of that exchange goes to Magomedov. Now the referee is calling for the inspection of the doctor. Accidental clash of heads has caused an injury to the right eye of the reigning Serbian national champion. 
And that's significant because if the injury causes the bout to be stopped, we will be going to the scorecards. Not only considering the two completed rounds, but the portion of the half of this third round that is being completed. So a reminder from the referee to both boxers to keep their head up. And it's Magomedov onto the front foot once again, taking it to Tejera. He tries to fire back, but look at the work he's taking to the body and the head, clipping right hook upstairs. And Tejera's being outworked here. Tries to establish his right jab and left cross. Good left hook to the body from Tejera. But the front foot pressure of Sadam Magomedov is surely going to pay dividends. But there's a minute to go, of course, and these are 92 kilogram heavyweights who can really punch. So the judges could be re rendered academic and irrelevant if one of them lands their Sunday punch. But it's Magomedov who is riding the momentum and the inspiration that he's receiving from this crowd, riding the momentum that he established in the second round. And he brings about a standing count. And Tejera, well, he does, he's not happy, but he's not doing a good enough job to keep this marauding figure wearing blue at bay. So something of an exclamation point put on the second round by Sadar Megamedov, who has outworked his opponent to land another solid left hook upstairs. Uppercut through the middle of the successful shot. Tejera looking to keep his composure. Lands a good right hand to the body, but takes a right hand over the top. And Magomedov rampaging in the final round, landing a left cross over the top to conclude it. A terrific conclusion to what was a very competitive affair. And I think that it's the man in the other corner, this man, who despite that significant laceration on his right eyebrow, fought his way through the adversity of that injury and simply outworked his man in the third and final round. That's how I see it. Remember, a whole host of scorecards tied at 19 points apiece coming into the third and final round after two completed rounds of boxing. And I think that Magomedov was the busier boxer, letting the shots go, and he was accurate with them as well. Tejera simply not busy enough for my money. And make no mistake, he was touched up repeatedly during the third round. Let's get the official verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, in the bout number 200, in the ring eight, the winner of points by split decision is the boxer round of the... And there's confirmation. A split decision victory for Sadar Megamedov takes him through to the round of 16 in the 92 kilogram heavyweight division. He eliminates the reigning Olympic Games bronze medalist, and that is how he did it. Four scorecards returned of 29-28. But crucially, Sadam Megamedov taking the verdict for four of the judges, and Abner Tejera de Silva eliminated. Courtesy of a hard-punching, marauding performance from the reigning Serbian national champion. The man from Dagestan has been taken to the hearts of the supporters here in Belgrade, representing Serbia with distinction here on the global stage. And he goes through to the round of 16. Very good performance indeed, a very good contest, but Abna Tejera is out and it's Magomedov who marches on. Our next contest is between boxers from Bosnia-Herzegovina and Lithuania. Our judges come from Korea, Slovakia, Japan, Turkey and Canada.
So Jamal Bosniak makes his way towards the red corner, preparing for his first bout of the World Championships. His opponent is Simonas Urbonovicius. He'll be boxing out of the blue corner. Emerson Pastor Ariaga of Guatemala is the referee. And we're underway in the 91 kilogram heavyweight division. Action from the second preliminary round of the tournament, the round of 32. It's the first bout of Belgrade 2021 for both of these boxers, having received buys in the round of 64. The boxers hail from Bosnia Herzegovina and Lithuania. The Southpaw wearing red is Jemal Bosniak, 36 years of age, competing in his fifth Aiba World Boxing Championships here. Incredibly experienced figure. His opponent is at the other end of the experience spectrum, just 19 years of age. That is Simones Urbonovicius. Bosniak, part of a three-man boxing team, as he bombs away with a backhand, but it lands with the inside of the glove. Threatened to become a rabbit punch as well. So three, and there's the same infringement once again. My goodness, the accuracy of Bosniak, not what it needs to be. But three men make up the boxing team of Bosnia Herzegovina. For Lithuania, they have eight boxers across the weight divisions here. Both of these men with plenty of national championship titles under their belt. Southpaw left, not too far away from Abonovicius. Right jab to the body from Bosniak, who is trying to close the range and did get through with a southpaw right hook, catching the chin of Abonovicius. That was just a little bit up in the air. Good double jab, preceding that left cross inside of the glove landing once again. But look at that for a roundhouse left from the man in red. Marauding forwards, looking to land with bent arm punches. Maybe waiting a little bit too long here. There's a burst of activity from Abonovicius. But surely he should be looking to test the conditioning of the... 36-year-old from Bosnia-Herzegovina, not by being reckless, but seeing how well he can move and whether he can keep the movement going. Abonovicius, well, there's 20 seconds left in this round, gentlemen. But Abonovicius, Abonovicius a very good mover, that much is evident. Now let's see how Bosniak fares if he has to continue to chase and try and close the gap, as he's doing now. Look at that from Abonov Abonovicius, right on cue, spun off the line, Left the man in red chasing shadows and looking beyond the ropes while Abonovicius was in center ring. So the tactics that both men trying to employ are trying to employ clear. First round in the book. And it's Bosniak who's taking it 10-9 across the board, all of the judges. 
preferring his aggressive approach to the first round. So round two, Simonis Abanovicius from Panavegis in Lithuania. Three national titles, two schoolboy and one junior title in his ranks. Remember, he's still only 19 years of age. A wonderful accomplishment to make it through to the world championship st stage representing his nation. Has been in action earlier this year. We lost to Scotland, Scott Forrest in the multi-nations tournament in Lithuania, the Algirdas Soki Cast tournament in his homeland. As for Jemal Bosniak, well, he attempted to qualify for the Olympics at the qualification tournament in the opening days when it was in London before being switched to Paris 18 months later. His first world championship appearance coming way back in Milan 2009. Entirely different sport almost then. Head guards were in effect, although it was the World Championships where the sport returned to three three-minute rounds. Since that time, he appeared in Baku 2011, Kazakhstan in 13, and Doha two years after that. So plenty of experience under the belt of this man. And here he is. Competing on the World Championship stage once again. He took the first round unanimously. In what is a classic encounter between youth and experience. One suspects all of the energy will be with the man in blue. But all of the know-how, all of the ring craft and the guile. As he sways away from punches while in the pocket. Oh, they're going to reside with the man in red. And oftentimes, when it comes to experienced athletes, experienced boxers, the question is how much of that knowledge can they still demonstrate physically? But Bosniak demonstrating that there is still plenty of gas left in the tank. Although, is it within the wherewithal of Abonovicius to test the man's energy levels? Because again, the man in red knows so much Oh, and look at that's always the danger when you're operating up in a he heavier weight class is if you go to put it on your opponent, one single shot can change everything. Roundhouse left again, sees Abonovicius in to indicate to the ref that it's a rabbit punch, looking for an explosive right hook is Bozniak. Just a glancing blow in the end. So difficult this for the man in blue. He scores with a good right jab. But the threat and the deterrent that Bosniak poses is so significant that the younger man isn't really able to step on it and test this man's conditioning in this, his fifth world championships. Because at this tempo, one suspects he's going to be very comfortable indeed, Jemal Bosniak. Taken the second round on a 3-2 split. And that's crucial because it means we have three scorecards of 2018, two scorecards of 19 points apiece after two observers scored the second round in favor of the Lithuanian teenager wearing blue. So into the final round then, and charging out of the gate is Jemal Bosniak. Took the first round unanimously, took the second on a 3-2 split. And so it's going to require a big final round from Simonas Obonovicius to turn this deficit around. 
Here's a good southpaw left hand from the Lithuanian boxer. Watching and waiting, trying to draw in Bosniak. But again, the clock is the friend of the man in red. Shared the ring, unsurprisingly, given the length of his tenure. At the top level of Aiba boxing, Bosniak has been in the ring with some outstanding boxers over the years. He was a quarter finalist in the 2015 European Games, where he was outpointed by Italy's Guido Vianello. Got World Series boxing experience as well, competing in the early days of the five round format in 2012 and 2013. Accuracy just decreasing there as he. Oh, but that was certainly wasn't inaccurate. That lead right hook sprung up off the front foot. Beyond the midpoint of the final round. And again, this will be a valuable learning experience for Simonis Rubanovic. Yes, of course, it's not over yet, and he may well turn it around. But the deeper we go into the contest, the more that Rubanovicius is entering the realm of needing a single knockout shot. He takes another clipping right hook. So when he and his coaching team review this contest, they'll look to see what he did well, and he's done plenty well, but also where he can improve and gain and benefit from the experience he's just had here in Belgrade. Put it into practice so the same mistakes aren't repeated. And that this becomes part of his foundation as he looks to work towards fulfilling his potential. And his considerable potential as well. Tall, 92 kilogram heavyweight boxer, just a teenager. May well fill out and end up as a super heavyweight. Moves very well and hailing from the nation that he does. Surprised he didn't get snapped up by the sports of basketball. Solid left hand landed by Bosniak. Basketball, a huge sport up in the Baltic nation. But boxing as well. The Valdez Petrauskas and various others, various others making their mark in Aiba boxing and indeed the professional ranks. Given the hook success that this man enjoyed. I think he's taken the final round. And so we'll progress through to the round of 16. How will the judges score this one? I feel it will be unanimous. But again, not in possession of the scores from the five judges ringside. Let's get the official announcement then to see who's going through. So there is confirmation of a unanimous point decision victory for the veteran from Bosnia-Herzegovina, Jemal Bosniak, through to the third preliminary round of the men's 92-kilogram heavyweight division. A unanimous point decision victor over the teenager from Lithuania, Simonis Urbanovicius. Will have learned a tremendous amount sharing the ring with a man of such tremendous experience. But we will see Bosniak once again on the 31st of October, where he'll be facing off against the home boxer, the Serbian boxer, Sada Megamedov. Some of the action then from that contest.
Up next are boxers from Austria and Iran. Our judges scoring this from from scoring this one are from Kazakhstan, Italy, Egypt, Bulgaria, and Chinese Taipei. representing Austria, please welcome Alexander Mraovic. So Alexander Mraovic all smiles as he approaches the boxing ring. His opponent is Tufan. Sharifi, he'll be boxing out of the blue corner. So smiles exchanged between the two boxers as our referee Jennifer Huggins of Canada was issuing the final instructions. We're in the 92 kilogram heavyweight division. Action from the second preliminary round. It's the first bout of the tournament for both of these two boxers. A hail from Austria and Iran. The boxer wearing red, the shaven headed figure is Alexander Moravich. 24 years of age, he the only representative on the Austrian team, competing in his second world championships here, having boxed at super heavyweight in Yekaterinburg two years ago. His opponent, wearing blue, is 23-year-old Tufan Sharifi. Part of a 10-strong Iranian boxing team. Two national titles at the senior level coming in consecutive years in 2018 and 2019 at 91 kilogram heavyweight for Sharifi. Straight right to the body was off the mark and in reaching for it, the referee reminding Maravich that he's to keep his head up. Well, there's been several reminders in that regard in the direction of the boxers, and so that's a nice counter right hand landed by Moravich. The boxer will have to watch that they don't get on the wrong side of the referee and pick up a warning. Left jab was a jolting shot landed by Moravich. Hard left hand driven in, results in a burst of punches to the body by Moravich. Moving well in the pocket. And working away to the body while Sharifi was there waiting. Well, he's conceding body shots there, the man in blue. And they could well take a toll later on. And Moravich continuing to move well to evade the hooks that are being fired in from Sharifi. But accuracy not accompanying them. Good right hand to the body turned in by Moravich once again. Saw Sharifi at the Asia Oceania qualification event in Amman in Jordan last year in a bid to qualify for Tokyo 2020. Made it through to the quarterfinals of that tournament. Was eliminated by the 
Boxer from Uzbekistan, Sanjar Tasunov. Maravich also tried to qualify for Tokyo 2020. Now we and a cut caused by a clash of heads. Let's see the severity of it. It's to the right eye of the shaven headed figure. So the doctor happy for the contest to continue. Is that a little bit of a cut on the left eye? of the man in blue. But Maravich unable to qualify for the Olympic Games, losing in the first preliminary round up at super heavyweight when he wasn't able to make it to the boxing ring. Conceding that on a walkover. So the man making his second world championship appearance Not really able to showcase his skills in his bid to progress or qualify for Tokyo. First round in the book then, and Maravich boxing effectively, making this man miss while scoring with some eye-catching punches. Good work to the body as well. When he takes it on a 3-2 split, I thought it was a little more convincing than that in Maravich's favor. So Sharifi. Taking the first round for two of the five scoring judges. So we go into the second round and the heads come together again, my goodness. Now oh, is that worsened the cut on the left eye of Sharifi? Looking for the right hand over the top is Maravich, but couldn't quite find a range. A nice lead left hand from Sharifi. The scoring shot. Well, this is going to be trouble for Maravich. He's been spoken to repeatedly, and this is what we said at the start of the contest. The Reminders were coming within the first 30 seconds. And referee Jennifer Huggins from Canada docking a point inside, or excuse me, issuing a, issuing a warning in the opening minutes of the second round. So that point deduction will be taken into account either at the end of this round, which we've seen during the championships here in Belgrade, or at the end of the contest. But either way, it's a significant turn of events as Maravic scores with a good left hand to the body. Sunk it in just above the belt line of his opponent. Exchange at mid-range between the two boxers. And again, dipping his head to stay out of the way of the punches. But the referee has already issued a warning about that infringement. And that is a push off of the blatant variety from Sharifi. He's trying to get physical in this one, impose his strength. Maravic inaccurate with that overhand right. It's becoming increasingly untidy when the two men find themselves at close quarters. Nice right hand turned in behind a high elbow from Maravich. I don't know whether that trace of blood around his mouth is from the eye injury or from a fresh injury. And again, Sharif is gonna, going to have to watch how he conducts himself here because he's claiming his man on the inside, he's pushing him off, and a referee is speaking to him repeatedly about that breach of the rules. Right hand over the top is a scoring shot, but then another tangle ensues. Referee has called time. And is this an injury to the mouth that is being caused by a punch? So when I was just posing the question as to whether the injury is being caused by a whether the blood that was visible is from the eye injury, it's actually from the mouth. And this injury, from the indication of the referee, has been caused by a punch. 
Oh, Maravich is keen to leave. The scrutiny of the doctor. And get back into the mix. Final seconds then of this round. And again, well, is it going to be another infringement? Head up, two rounds, two deductions, two warnings issued, resulting in a two-point deduction against Maravic. One more warning, and he will be disqualified from the World Championships. Terrible round endured by Alexander Maravich, the lone representative of the Austrian boxing team, issued two warnings for repeatedly dipping his head low. So when we take a look at the scorecard, let's see whether the warning has been brought into effect there. And you can see from the scorecard that it clearly has. Sharifi in a commanding position. Two scores of 16, two scores of 17, one score card of 18 points apiece. So going into the third and final round, Maravich is going to need an inside the distance victory for my money. And most importantly, from his perspective, given the way he boxes, he's got to avoid picking up another warning. Because if he receives another warning, he will be out. DSQ for repeatedly infringing the rules. So into the third and final round then, Alexander Moravich for Continental Silver in the European Under-22 Championships back in 2017. Oh, that's a good right hand landed from Sharifi. Moravich trying to fire back. He scores with a good left hand to the body. Not much accuracy behind the subsequent hooks of Sharifi, putting everything into the shots. And the referee calling for the inspection of the doctor once again. Is this another injury that's been caused by a punch or the same one that's being inspected? He's picked up a whole series because there's a cut to the rear of his shaven head. Injured to the right eye in the first round. The mouth has been damaged. You see the ref, the doctor. Well, you can't see the doctor at the moment, but I can see the doctor. And he was having to inspect a multitude of injuries that have been accrued by Maravic during the course of this contest. So Sharif, you're looking to keep himself out of harm's way. And he, of course, won't want to pick up a warning for pushing because he's been spoken to about that illegal move repeatedly. And there it is once again, see, he lived the hand into the face of his opponent with a minute gone. Good right hand over the top as the heads bump on the inside once again. A forearm comes in from Maravic. My goodness, this is untidy. And I think Sharifi is teetering on the edge of a warning here. And we are not yet at the mid midpoint of the third and final round. Well, that's another... Stern talking to from the referee in the direction of Maravich. And one suspects if he breaches that again by dipping his head, that a third warning will be issued. I'm just left with that sense here ringside. With just over a minute to go in the third and final round. Well, there's been plenty of commitment shown by both boxers, but this type of interlude, the spoiling, the grappling, the holding on the inside, has made it a pretty untidy affair, truth be told. But both boxers showing terrific will to win, winging in some hard punches. There hasn't been much accuracy, but we've seen increasing amounts of this type of coming together. Grappling, mauling, holding at close range. But given what transpired, particularly in the second round, after Maravich took the first on a 3-2 split, well, the second round was a nightmare for him. And the points deduction have already been accounted for on the scorecards. Well, seeing as Maravich has been docked two points, 
for repeated ducking of his head. Sharifi perhaps fortunate not to be warned for excessive holding. That's a perfunctory touch of gloves if ever I saw one. And I think it will be two fan Sharifi who will be going through at the expense of Alexander Moravic. See the extent of his injuries to the mouth, to the rear of the head. You just saw there on the left-hand side and the right eye as well. Tufan Sharifi, the two-time national champion of Iran in his first world championship appearance, I feel will be progressing through to the round of 16. And this is opening cut after this, his opening bout of Belgrade 2021. And there's confirmation of a split decision verdict in favor of Tufan Sharifi of Iran. 4-1 in his favor. Only the judge from Chinese Taipei preferring the work of the Austrian boxer. And it's Sharifi who will go through to the round of 16. He'll be in action again on the 31st of October in the evening session. So Austria's interest in the World Championships comes to an end here because their lone representative, Alexander Moravich, in this his second World Championship appearance, has been eliminated in the first preliminary round. Next up is a contest between boxers from Cuba and Bulgaria. Our judges come from Egypt, Ukraine, Guatemala, England, and Puerto Rico. Coming to the ring first, fighting out of the red corner, the boxer representing Cuba. Please welcome Julio La Cruz Perrata. Well, if you're a fan of Aiba boxing, this man needs no introduction. Julio Cesar La Cruz making his way towards the red corner. His opponent is from Bulgaria, Radoslav Pantolev will box out of the blue corner. So Alexander Kamidov of Uzbekistan is the referee. And we are underway. We're in the 92 kilogram heavyweight division. This one a contest between boxers from Cuba and Bulgaria. And the man wearing red is, well, I'm not sure you can be a legend while you're still active, but he's one of the best Aiba boxers of all time. Julio Cesar La Cruz, the reigning two-time Olympic champion, a man who has claimed four world championship titles 
during the course of his illustrious career. Comes in as a bronze medalist from Yekaterinburg two years ago. That was down at 81 kilograms, but moved up to 91 kilogram heavyweight and duly boxed his way to an Olympic title in Tokyo earlier this summer. Adding to the 81 kilogram crown, he won in Rio five years ago. His opponent, boxing in his third world championships here, that is 28-year-old Radoslav Pantelev of Bulgaria. World championship debut coming way back in 2013, and he comes in as a bronze medalist from the 91 kilogram heavyweight division as La Cruz looking to turn an uppercut underneath. He lost to the eventual champion, the formidable Muslim Gaji Magomedov at the semi-final stage. And again, so right cross comes over the top from La Cruz. But that gives you an idea as to the caliber of the two men sharing the boxing ring. Both of these boxers representing eight-man teams as La Cruz with that characteristic back foot style and wide-legged stance. And what he is so good at doing, what his whole team, truth be told, are so good at doing is taking the opening round and then La Cruz in particular will use those terrific legs to just control the distance and continue to pile up the points in subsequent rounds. Not a high tempo boxer by any stretch of the imagination, but he's so comfortable in the boxing ring. You can see that it's a daring style he possesses. There was speculation on the circuit as to whether the man was perhaps past his best as he scores with a check shot and then Digs in a body shot underneath, but this is how he goes about his craft. Double left hand, partially blocked by the right glove, but look at the manner in which he's able to stop on a dime. Tensile strength in his ankles required to do that. Is impressive indeed. From full speed down to zero abruptly, and able to change direction. Good work to the body, and again, almost gentle the manner in which he goes about his boxing. Don't think Pantaleev would have been hurt by anything that came in his direction. Some solid shots speared into the body by La Cruz. There was an uppercut as well. As is his custom, standing in between rounds. And one suspects he's taken that opening round after three minutes of boxing. And there's confirmation. A clean sweep of the cards for Julio Cesar La Cruz. So some of the action then from the opening round. There's a good left hand over the top. But look at the manner in which he's just able to turn, often at the last minute, to ensure that a shot that was about to land flush is a glancing blow at best, or one that misses the target. And I mentioned the fact that there was some speculation as to whether those reflexes were perhaps just being dulled a little bit. Remember Josh Boatsy, who went on to take Olympic bronze in Rio, 2016, put him on the floor at the World Champs in Doha. La Cruz went on to win another world title. That one was his third, adding to the ones in Baku and Kazakhstan. And then Khalil Ko of the United States of America put him on the floor and the referee stopped the contest after issuing a count at the Chemistry Cup in Halle, which sent well, shockwaves all around the boxing world as again La Cruz at his best just moving masterfully in the boxing ring there's a contemptuous flashing of that gum shield and you'll see the gold teeth beneath it as well oh that's a beautiful left hand to the body the left hand upstairs when it was doubled up may have been partially blocked by the right glove but that is the size of Pantaleev's task here trying to close the distance against a man coming up from 81 kilogram light heavyweight. Was making that weight division for so long, Julio Cesar La Cruz. I first saw him at the 2011 World Championships in Baku when I was ringside. And I was, well, suitably impressed is an understatement for the way the man went about his craft. Hands down by his belt line, Sure, he can tie his shoelaces while standing up. Terrific reach the man possesses. 
and limber lungs, limber legs, strong lungs, and just able to keep the movement going. Came away with a bronze in the World Championships in Yekaterinburg two years ago. The eventual champion Bekzad Nerdalatov beating him in the semi final. And again, for a boxer coming up, oh, beautiful boxing, and then the counter right hand, and then a quick fisted flurry once again. Pantaleev smiling in his direction, but in the meantime, he's being touched up. His nose is damaged, and he's seeing the points pile up. La Cruz taking a look beyond the boxing ring. <laughs> Pantaleev saying, come on, hold your feet, fight me. That's what the late, great Marvin Hagler was saying to the 1976 Olympic champion Sugar Ray Leonard during their showdown for the undisputed middleweight title in 87. Sugar Ray Leonard told me during the course of a conversation that he just told him repeatedly, no, 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 he's going to box on his terms. And he was the man who had his hand raised at the vi as the victor in a contest which still causes, causes fierce controversy and intense conversation to this day well second round completed and once again it has been a very difficult mission indeed for this man simply cannot catch his opponent cleanly 81 kilogram light heavyweight struggle to do that for the best part of a decade and look at that four scorecards returned of 10-8 from a man who is a back foot boxer that's remarkable, but such was his dominance during the course of that second three-minute round. So some of the action then, some exquisite, exquisite shot selection from La Cruz, demonstrating his strength on the inside as well. But look at that for making the man miss and making him pay. Wonderful to watch. So we go into the third and final round then. And Radoslav Pantaleev, man who comes in as the reigning bronze medalist, having been outpointed by Muslim Gajimaga Medov at the semi final stage in Yekaterinburg two years ago, is struggling to lay a glove on the reigning Olympic champion in the heavyweight division. And incidentally, it was Muslim Gajimaga Medov who was outpointed by Julio Cesar La Cruz in the gold medal bout in Tokyo earlier this summer. It was a terrific performance. And a boxer as accomplished as the tall, broad back Russian reigning world champion was not able to get in the same league, in the same ballpark as La Cruz during the course of that gold medal bout. And Pantaleev is finding himself in a similar position here. La Cruz continuing to box beautifully and Pantaleev look at that literally running after his man but how many jabs has he taken while trying to close the distance it must be immensely frustrating and again he says come on fight me hold your feet stand still and let's have a tear up but La Cruz saying well I'm doing what I want to do is he continues to bust him up with the jab terrific work at the midpoint of this final round and you've got to credit the persistence of Pantaleev because what else can he do and as mentioned sometimes the radar just does go awry a mouthpiece dislodged by the pecking poking punches of La Cruz but Pantaleev has got to maintain the belief that he can find the punch to put this man on the floor and out of the contest but so far well I think that gesture said it all what do you want me to do So both boxers told to remain in neutral corners while the referee sanitizes his latex gloves. While the clock continuing to tick on Pantaleev's tenure in this World Championships. And you have to credit the manner in which he's going about it. He knows that he's in the, the ring with a man who has got his number tonight. 
He's afforded himself a wry smile, but make no mistake, that belies the competitive spirit that he's trying to summon up. There he drives in a hard right hand to the body. But La Cruz able to escape from the confined position on the ropes once again. Made to miss as again, just pivoting, spinning off the line, turned in a nudging left hand to the belt line. It's been a terrific display. But Pantaleev has been put on the margins of this contest by the mastery of Julio Cesar La Cruz. Terrific performance. And again, this is against a man coming in as a five-time national champion of the passionate boxing nation of Bulgaria, reigning world championship bronze medalist, World Series boxing participant as well. So much experience, so much success globally and continentally, but he was not at the races in this contest tonight. A beautiful display produced by Julio Cesar La Cruz, job done. And a man contesting his first world championships at 92 kilogram heavyweight has completely outclassed Radoslav Pantaleev, who seems rather frustrated in the blue corner and one can understand why because he seldom landed a solid shot on his opponents all night long and again we have to emphasize this is a man who is one of the best in the business he knows what he's doing they don't give away world championship bronze medals that is what Pantaleev earned last time in Yekaterinburg but simply not able to get to grips with the elusive Julio Cesar La Cruz So the familiar celebration of Julio Cesar La Cruz, a salute to the fans in the arena here. And you see that embrace because that's because there's a Cuban coach in the Bulgarian's corner. And nice to see that sportsmanship between the two boxers. A wide margin of victory, four scorecards returned of 30 points to 25. We'll see Julio Cesar La Cruz return to the boxing ring on the 31st of October in the evening session as he continues his quest for a fifth world championship title. Radoslav Pantaleev eliminated in the second preliminary round of the men's heavyweight tournament. Brilliant display by the Cuban maestro. Our next contest is between boxers from Albania and England. Our scoring judges come from Turkey, Korea, Netherlands, Canada and Puerto Rico. So approaching the boxing ring is Indrit Latsi of Albania. He'll be fighting out of the red corner. And now, please welcome in the blue corner of the ring, the boxer representing England, Lewis Williams. His opponent is Lewis Williams of England.
Well, this contest is between boxers from England and Albania. More compact figure wearing red is Indrit Latsi. 26 years of age, competing in his first world championships. The boxer wearing blue, the taller of the two athletes, is Lewis Williams, and he's getting to work behind a rapid fire, accurate left jab. See the shots being partially caught by the gloves of Latsi, but some of the shots still making their way through. And he used that left hand to terrific, terrific effect. Did Lewis Williams to open his world championship tournaments here, winning on a unanimous points decision over the 2020 national champion of Azerbaijan, Raouf Raimov. Really dispirited him with that lead left hand. And it was a point, I think it was around the second round, if memory serves, where he got on the front foot as he's demonstrating here and just completely dominated the contest. And you can see the nose reddened and perhaps damaged already of Latsi by the accurate straight punches that are penetrating these defences. Terrific work with the lead left by Lewis Williams, the 22-year-old from Warwickshire. Really busy with that lead left hand. And the nose has indeed been damaged. Look at the variety on it as well as he turned that one underneath. But everything flowing beautifully off the lead left of Lewis Williams, who is tall at the 92-kilogram heavyweight division. Another right cross crashes home behind the left hand. And this has been one-way traffic in the first half of this opening round. Lewis Williams setting out his stall immediately and setting about his man with controlled boxing behind the left jab. You see Latsy have to inspect that nose because it is indeed leaking blood. The white gloves will show that up. Very difficult mission for the man from Albania. Part of a three-man boxing team. There are nine men representing England here at the World Championships in Belgrade. So Latsy has got to try and find a way inside this deterrent of a left jab. Look at how he's cracking it out with real authority, Lewis Williams. Oh, and then turning the left uppercut underneath as well. The defences of Latsy continually being breached by the accurate shot selection of Lewis Williams. What an opening round he has produced. From the opening belt, got onto the front foot and just poked out that lead left hand and working it like a broom handle. Pop, 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 just poking it out repeatedly to both body and head. Turning the uppercut through on occasion as well. Dave Alloway up the steps to issue the instructions in that blue corner. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some 10-8 scores here. That was quite brilliant from Lewis Williams. <laughs> and in fact, we get four score cards of 10-8. Terrific opening round by the English boxer in blue. Dominating the first three minutes against Indrit Latsi of Albania. And this is how we did it. Could play that on a loop. Left hand being tripped out repeatedly. Then he started to look for the backhand. Then he started to turn up a cuts underneath. But everything, make no mistake, is flowing off the lead left hand of Lewis Williams. So we go into the second round then, and Indrit Latsi, to his credit, has come out aggressively to try and overturn the two-point deficit that he faces after one round of boxing. Four judges return scores of 10-8, such was the dominance of the man in blue. Everything coming behind the left jab. Well, both of these men have enjoyed top spot on the podium in their national championships. Latsy's success came up at super heavyweight in 2014. Lewis Williams claimed national championship gold three years ago in the 91 kilogram heavyweight division. Pointing Nati Nguenya. So Latsy, give him credit. The man is going for it. Lewis
Lewis Williams enjoying continental podium success at the under-22 championships in Vladikavkaz in Russia two years ago. Silver medalist at 91 kilogram heavyweight in that tournament. Here he is at the senior world championships for the first time as the doctor has to call time to get this injured nose inspected. Referee hasn't even bothered to make the gesture. So I think it's clear that it's been caused by a punch. Or a series of punches, truth be told. Or I can tell you the type of punch that it was. It was the left jab of Lewis Williams. And he's resuming to work, working behind that shot once again. Backing up the man behind the stick once more. Dominating the contest with that most basic shot in the book, but it's the most important shot in the book for my money. Measures your distance, keeps the opponents at bay, keeps them occupied, keeps them out of trouble, and just sets them up for the big backhand and hooks to follow. Heads come together there on the inside. Latsy keen to claim his man just to gain some respite. So inside the final minute, good left hand got through from Lazzi. And again, credit to the man for continuing to compete. Because that is a spirit-sapping left jab that he keeps being put on the end of, just as he was there after the referee instructed to box. So relaxed, so fluid. And when a boxer is moving as freely as this, they can box at this pace all night long. There's no tension. Not forcing anything. Everything is just flowing magnificently like water. And Latsy trying to quicken his feet and get into punching range, but then it's Lewis Williams on the front foot once again and touches him up with a two-shot combination just before the belt. This man continuing to compete, but he's not able to get a foothold in the contest simply because this man's lead left hand is incessant and unerringly accurate. Terrific work once again from Lewis Williams by virtue of the fact that only one 10-8 score has been returned rather than four. Lazzi had a better second round, but he didn't even come close to getting himself into this contest. Some of the action from round number two. So into the third and final round then, Lewis Williams has been in complete control over the course of the first six minutes. He has done an outstanding job in keeping his more compact opponent from Albania, Indrit Latsi, at bay. And it's all very well having an advantage in height and reach, but it's only an advantage if you can utilize those attributes. And Lewis Williams has turned them into assets that are serving him terrifically. My goodness. It's as though he's increasing the power on that left hand because I can hear it and almost feel the reverberation from ringside as he's cranking that one into the head of Indrit Latsi. Terrific work. And from his perspective now and that of the England team, he's just got to remain switched on because the only way Latsi can have his hand raised as the victor here is to switch off Lewis Williams run him on to a knockout shot so what type of tactics will Williams adopt will he continue with what has served him so well at the start of his opening contest against Rauf Raimov he did demonstrate the ability to box on the back foot but then I was as I say there was a discernible a decisive moment in the contest where he just got on the front foot behind the left jab and utterly dominated, dispiriting the man from Azerbaijan en route to a unanimous points decision win. 
So beyond the midpoint of the third and final round, and look at that on the resumption. If it was a game of guess who, I think you only need one answer if it, when it comes to the card of Lewis Williams. Whatever the question is, left jab would be an accurate response. But make no mistake, he possesses more weaponry in his arsenal. But everything is coming off that lead left hand, and it's been wonderful to behold. Latsy pounds his fist together as he prepares to re-enter the fray as if to say, come on, let me get something going. But he can't get anything going because he's continually inconvenienced by the lead left hand of Lewis Williams. Oh, but that is a good right hand landed by Latsy. And again, concentration going to have to be crucial for Lewis Williams up in the 92 kilogram heavyweight division. And remember, Latsy's coming down from super heavyweight. So again... He snakes out that lead left hand as straight as an arrow on the resumption. But Latsy, give him credit, he's still in there pitching. Lewis Williams took the shot well, but it was a reminder that Latsy is still a live opponent. And particularly up in the higher weight classes, if a man remains on his feet, then he remains dangerous. So the conclusion of the contest... A terrific display produced by Lewis Williams in this, his second bout of the World Championships here in Belgrade. It's been a long wait for Indrit Latsy to get his contest underway, his tournament underway here on the fifth day. And Lewis Williams did not allow him to get a toehold in the contest. Dominant from the opening belt, working behind a lance of a lead left hand, continued to soften up the man all contest long en route to what will be a wide margin of victory on the scorecards and a unanimous point Ladies decision verdict. In the bout number 204, in the ring A, the winner on points by unanimous decision is the boxer out of the blue corner. And there is confirmation. Lewis Williams of England, a unanimous points decision victor. Outpointing Indrit Latsy of Albania with a beautiful performance. Everything predicated on the left jab, and that served him terrifically well. He goes through to the third preliminary round, two wins out of two. He's in the round of 16 now, edging ever closer to a podium place, and his confidence will be sky high. Appearing here in his first senior world championships, it's been a long wait for him He's here representing England, but of course the GB boxer at heavyweight has been the formidable Chevron Clark. But here, Lewis Williams has got his opportunity, and isn't he seizing it terrifically, working magnificently behind the left jab and completely dominating Indrit Latsy en route to a unanimous points decision win. Ladies and gentlemen, we now bring your attention to the ring A, where we present to you the bout number two. Next is a contest between boxers from Slovenia and Ukraine. Our judges come from Chinese Taipei, Bulgaria, Italy, the Netherlands and Egypt. Alias Ban making his way towards the red corner. And now, please welcome in the blue corner of the ring, the boxer from Ukraine, Robert Marlo. His opponent boxing out of the blue corner is Robert Marton of Ukraine.
So Emmanuel Ferreira of Puerto Rico is our referee. And we remain in the 92 kilogram heavyweight division. It's a contest between boxers from Slovenia and Ukraine. A taller figure wearing red is the Slovenian boxer Alias Ban, part of a seven strong Slovenian boxing team. The man from Ljubljana, good left hook landed by the man wearing blue and that is Robert Marton. Marton, 24 years of age, competing in his first world championships at the senior level. However, this is a man I first saw on a global stage at the 2014 Youth Olympics in Nanjing. I was ringside to commentate on him in that tournament. Came away with a quarter-final finish. And earlier that summer, he took World Youth Bronze in Bulgaria. The year before that, he was a World Junior Champion at 80 kilograms. And the tournament took place in his homeland in Kiev in Ukraine. So a man who has been on the radar for some time in Aiba boxing, looking for the backhand there, but it was off the mark by some distance. First bout of the tournament for both of these men, neither of them called upon to compete in the round of 64. 38 boxers making up the 92 kilogram heavyweight bracket. So the majority of boxers competing here will be getting their campaign underway in the first, excuse me, the second preliminary round, the round of 32. So moving forward behind the left right was banned, but he couldn't find a range as Mar Marton catapulting himself off the ropes. So two minutes gone in the opening round. Ban inching forwards on top a wide-legged stance in and out with the feet is Martin. So Martin, popping and weaving near the ropes, fainted with the right hand, came back with the left, couldn't find the range. Final 30 seconds of the opening round. There he did bob and weave in front of his man and peck him with a lead left hand. Short of the mark, but he kept the attack going. Did ban, double jab, right hand, driving Martin to the ropes. But at this type of distance, he's just not finding the accuracy with his work, the man in red. That left jab was a scoring shot. First round in the book. So a 4-1 split in favor of Martin after three minutes of boxing. Well, a bit of a delay to begin the second round. Referee just checking there are no checking there are no foreign objects on the canvas. So Mr. Ferreira happy, and the second round is underway. Martin, one of 13 boxers representing Ukraine. Double left jab is a beautiful combination from him. Looking to get busy with the left jab. You see how he's not bringing it back to his chin. He's just taking the power off it and flicking it out to, in rapid-fire fashion to pile up the points. A solid right hand landed by Ban, who continues to inch his way forwards. 
But perhaps he's got to be a little more active with his lead left hand here. He's the taller of the two boxers. But the greater depth of experience was from the Ukrainian, it belongs to the Ukrainian boxer. He was not too far wide of the mark with the right hand over the top a little while ago. And competing in his first senior world championships comes to the ring without a national title to his name. But in the Balkan Championships earlier this year, he lost to the man who was just outpointed by Lewis Williams, Indrit Latsi. Eliminating him in the semi-final. Right hand over the top may have been a slap from Marton. The man we've seen in action in the 86 kilogram cruiserweight division. Victor Shelstraeta of Belgium, who scored that devastating knockout of his opponent from Uzbekistan as Marton lands a good right hand. He stopped Bant in the second round of a multi-nation tournament in Slovenia, the Maribor, the Maribor Cup, earlier this year. So not as much international experience under the belt of the older man in red, but he's in here competing. But Marton doing a better job controlling the distance for my money, although he hasn't been overly active with his punch output either. There's a right hand lead from Marton, then a solid left jab. That's a good use of that shot from the taller man. Can he find the range consistently now with that lead left? Well, Martin looking to get his hands free. That was hitting on a break, surely by Bant. Referee didn't follow up with any talking to. Second round in the book. Van actually taking that round on a 3-2 split. So we have got tied scores on three of the scorecards going into the final round. And Marton, his lack of activity, coming back to haunt him there. He appeared to be the more comfortable, but he wasn't that busy. And so he's been edged in the second round. So into the third and final round then of a contest that is in the balance. Marton was busy in the busier compared to the second round in round number one. The man in blue. Ban remaining committed to his task. And in the second round towards the end of it did find a range with his lead left hand. Can he continue that there? There you see he doubles it up but look at that for a flashing left right. Roundhouse left, whipping right hand fired over by Marton. And given the way the second round was scored, is Marton going to have to take the initiative here if he hopes to progress and get busy? Because the waiting and the low punch output saw him pay a price in the second round and he was edged on a 3-2 split. Counter right hand over the top, wasn't too far away, pushed it out twice, did Marton. Neither boxer working on the inside. The attempted reverse one two was off the mark from Marton. Band's response was inaccurate as well, but there's a solid right hand that landed right down the pipe. 
from Robert Martin. And it's damaged the nose of Ben. So timeout called. The doctor's going to be called upon to take a look at this damaged nose. Ban telling the, <laughs> the referee that he's okay. I think the referee wants to hear the opinion of the doctor. No signal from the ref as to whether this injury was caused by a punch or a clash of heads. But for my money, it was the right hand that Ban was able to, excuse me, Martin was able to catapult out and land on Ban that inflicted the injury. Well, it was this type of posture which saw Martin concede the second round on a 3-2 split. Counter left hook is a nice shot from Ban. But it was just guilty of waiting a little bit too long and there you see Ban score with a left right to the body landing to the chest plate of the man in blue and again the fainting continues who will commit it's a left jab to the body that scored without reply for Ban Martin disengaging as though he feels he's done enough in this third and final round that's a perspective I happen to share but it is very risky nursing a lead you think you have over the line when it's we have scorecards of 19 19 after six minutes of boxing and where you were edged in the second round principally for my money because of a low punch output so I happen to think Martin has done enough But he was boxing on occasion as he was saving himself for bouts later in the tournament. Ban having his nose damaged by a beautifully picked right cross in that final round. Let's get the official announcement. And here's confirmation. Robert Martin of Ukraine, a split decision victor over Alias Ban, taking it on a 4 1 split. The judge from the Netherlands preferring Martin's work in all three of the completed rounds. So a comfortable display indeed by the former world junior medalist, gold medalist competing in his first senior world championships here and he gets his tournament underway with a win he goes through to the round of 16 where he will face off against England's Lewis Williams that bout scheduled for the evening session on the 31st of October Our next contest is between boxers from Poland and Kazakhstan. Our judges scoring this one are from Slovakia, Japan, Moldova, Egypt and Uzbekistan.
And just a few repairs being applied to ring A. Saw the referee take a look at one particular spot on the canvas. And so that being addressed now by the crew in attendance here at the Stark Arena. So a few running repairs taking place to ring A. Saw the referee checking that spot on the canvas during our previous bout. So that being attended to by the crew here at the Stark Arena. Not quite sure what that gesture means. From the gentleman tending to the boxing ring. While making his way to the boxing ring is Mateusz Bereznitski. opponent is Ibek Oralbay of Kazakhstan. He'll be boxing out of the blue corner. Emerson Pastor Ariaga of Guatemala is our referee. We're in the 92 kilogram heavyweight division between two tall 92 kilogram heavyweights. The man wearing red who has made a brilliant start behind that left hand is Mateusz Bereznitski, part of an eight man Polish team, just 20 years of age, competing in his first. World Boxing Championships. His opponent, Ibek Oralbay of Kazakhstan, is 21 years of age. First in your World Championships for him. Comes to the ring as a three time national champion of Kazakhstan. Going in search of the right hand, but boxing effectively off the ropes and bombing away with the backhand is Beresh Nitsky. Beresh Nitsky. Taken three national titles in Poland. One youth, one under 23, one senior. His most recent title came in 2020, the same year when he took a senior title and the under 23 crown. Actually lives and trained out of the Gosport ABC in England, the Gosport Boxing Club, as he's picked off by a two shot combination there. Managed to have a brief word with him as another left hand crashes home from Oral Bay. And he says that he makes his way to Poland, something of a commuter for national team camps. Managed to catch up with him when he came away. After he came away with a bronze medal finish 
at the Under-22 European Championships in Roseto earlier this summer. Was there to commentate on that. And he acquitted himself very well indeed. Winning two contests out of three to earn that bronze medal podium place. His opponent, Ibek Oralbay. As I mentioned, it's his first senior world championships, but my goodness, he's enjoyed global success before. I was there to commentate on his Youth Olympic Games gold medal triumph in Buenos Aires three years ago. Earlier that year, he took world youth silver and continental youth gold in 2018. Is he wasn't too far away with the right hand. So Berezhnitsky spoken to, but then put on the end of a right cross, left jab, and he's backed it as he's backed into his own corner. Breathing through a mouth that's slightly open now. It was a terrifically brisk start from Berezhnitsky. Takes another left jab with his back on the ropes. He wasn't moving, and one wonders whether his gas tank is just ra draining. And that bell, the sound of the bell can't come soon enough for allow his, to allow his energy levels to replenish because it was a terrifically brisk start, but then he was holding his feet in the closing stages and allowing Oral Bay to tee off on what was effectively a stationary target. Brisk opening round between these two tall 92 kilogram heavyweights. And Oral Bay taking it for all five scoring judges. 10-9 across the board. Some of the action then from the first round. Berezhnitsky came out very aggressively, had success with his left hand, but when he's spending time on the ropes like that, well, it allowed Oral Bay to pick him off. And the deeper we got into the round, the more time Berezhnitsky was spending time on the ropes, allowing this man to capitalize. So into the second round then. Ibek Oralbay, part of a maximal, maximum size, 13 strong Kazakh boxing team. A boxer in each of the 13 weights, including his twin brother. There's a nice counter right hand from Berezhnitsky. His brother Nurbek is boxing here at 80 kilograms. Representing Kazakhstan here at the World Championships. There's a nice right hand from Berezhnitsky, and then he got to work with the left jab as well. Hard right hand driven into the body of Berezhnitsky. And a boxer in shape only needs a few seconds for his energy levels to recover, so Berezhnitsky altogether sharper to begin this second round than he was at the conclusion of the first. Will he be able to keep the movement and the accuracy going? What a slapping right hand is a solid shot landed, landed by Berezhnitsky. Then he goes head, body then head. Attack coming from both flanks and he's spearing effectively with that backhand. And how about that for a left jab? But that's countered by the same shot from Oral Bay. But again, coming square on the ropes and just inviting that pressure. Oral Bay edging forwards behind a low held guard. Maybe Berezhnitsky trying to set a trap, but when his back touches the ropes, there's absolutely nowhere else for him to go. Halfway through the second round. And again, the pattern we saw in the first, perhaps repeating itself here. Can Berezhnitsky keep the movement going? Sustained pressure of the flailing variety being applied by Oral Bay. Getting himself off the ropes and coming forward with a flurry of punches is Berezhnitsky. Now he's in the space of center ring, but then maneuvered back to the ropes on the other side, trying to establish his straight shots. But he's in the corner, his own corner, and that is a dangerous place to be against a man like Oral Bay. Again, can he keep the movement going? His back's touching the strands once again. Scores with a good straight shot, but then takes a hard right hand over the top from Oral Bay. Another right-hand success for the man in blue. Little left hand turned underneath by Berezhnitsky. 
Three shot salvo sees the final left hand get through as Berezhnitsky became a little bit disorganized in the face of that rather ungainly looking attack from Oral Bai. Two shot salvo from him was countered by a left jab from the man in blue and then looked as though he was attempting a layback. The chin of Berezhnitsky came up in the air and it was picked off. That right hand not too far away. Good left hand landed by the man in red. Big swing and a miss from Oral Bai and he was countered by a right from Berezhnitsky. And how about that for a right hand? from Mateusz Berezhnitski right on the belt on court to right hook which caught his man solidly two rounds in the book very competitive boxing remember it was Oral Bai who took the first 10-9 across the board and Berezhnitski taking it for the judge from Uzbekistan a 4-1 split in favor of the reigning Kazakh national champion. So some of the action in from the second round. Whipping roundhouse right landed by Berezhnitsky. But when he finds himself in this position, it's far easier compared to when he's in center ring for Oral Bay to land with scoring shots. So we go into the third and final round of a contest that is being competitive after two completed rounds. It's all square on the scorecard of one judge who scored the second round in favor of Berezhnitsky. But it's 20 points to 18, the lead for Oral Bay with six minutes in the book. Berezhnitsky, to his credit, has come out quickly to begin this third in a bid to overturn the deficit. Good right cross landed by the three-time Polish national champion. Also competed in the English championships as well, coming away with a bronze medal finish in the English youth edition of the event in 2019. And like so many boxers who are on display here and indeed who have graced the AIBA World Championship and stage over the years, he's won the Haringey Box Cup. Here's victory coming in the 2019 Youth Edition of the event. So steady, steadily accumulating more international experience at a aforementioned bronze medal finish in the under-22 continental event. Here he is competing in his first world championships and he's on the front foot here looking to back up Oral Bay. After conceding the opening two rounds, the first unanimously, the second on a 4-1 split. So really good to see that changing tactics by Berezhnitsky because for the first two rounds he spent an awful lot of time after the on the ropes after around the first minute that's where Oral Bay is trying to position him back towards now but Berezhnitsky coming out strong to begin the third round operating from the space of the ring and looking to back up the 2018 Youth Olympic Games gold medalist looking for a big right uppercut but couldn't find the range and it's really good to see the change of tactics implemented by boxers. Saw Oral Bay just up on his toes, but Berezhnitsky, looking as though he's boxing to order, his corner must have told him, get on your front foot and walk this guy down. You're trailing by 20 points to 18 for four of the five judges. Both men feeling the pace as what has been a physical encounter. Good left jab on the resumption from Oral Bay. Solid left jab on a resumption, then a bit of left shoulder going in from Berezhnitsky. Oral Bay, remember the commanding position that he has earned after six minutes of boxing, puts him in a position where he can manage the final round to an extent. He won't want to walk onto a finishing shot, keep himself out of harm's way, won't want to pick up an injury. That impedes his progress in the tournament. Solid left-handed response from Berezhnitsky after he made Oral Bay miss. Oral Bay up on his toes now, just seeing this one over the line. Very good display indeed. He steals a jab, glance to his corner. Solid left jab from Berezhnitsky. It was a left jab in response from Oral Bay. And both men feeling the effects of their exertions during the course of that 92 kilogram heavyweight contest. But one suspects it will be this man who will be going through, given the context of the scorecards after two rounds of boxing. Managed the third round very well because. Mateusz Berezhnitsky increased the pressure in round three. 
And one can only ponder why he didn't perhaps adopt that approach earlier. Now, maybe would have been met head on by Odell Bay, who would have been less accommodating and going on the back foot with the contest still in, in the balance. So there's confirmation of a split decision victory for Ibek Oralbay of Kazakhstan. The reigning Youth Olympic Games champion threw on a 4-1 split every card, 28-29. Testimony to the strong final round produced by Mateusz Bereznitski after conceding the first round unanimously, the second on a 4-1 split. He really did pursue his man with aggressive intent in the third and final round, but wasn't able to produce the big round that he needed to get it back to parity or the finishing salvo. Ibek Oralbay earning, him round, earning himself two rounds of insurance with his performance in the first two rounds. Very good contest, very good display, where Oralbay started strong and Bereznitski concluded the bout in strong fashion. Good competitive contest. It's Oralbay who goes through. Our final bout of this session is between boxers from Belarus and Uzbekistan. Ladies and gentlemen, we now proceed with the concluding bout in the ring A. Our judges are from Egypt, Ireland, Sweden, Korea, and Thailand. Ringside judges from Egypt, Ireland, Sweden, Republic of Korea, and Thailand. Referee in the ring, Jennifer Huggins, Canada. Making his way towards the boxing ring is Vladislav Smialikov of Belarus. His opponent is Uzbekistan's Madiar Said Rakimov. He'll be boxing out of the blue corner. So our referee, Jennifer Huggins, sends both boxers back to their respective corners. And this 92 kilogram heavyweight contest is our final bout of this eighth session of boxing on day five. Here at the World Championships in Belgrade, it's between boxers from Belarus and Uzbekistan. A tall figure wearing red is Vladislav Smialikov, 28 years of age, part of a six strong Belarusian boxing team. His opponent, Wearing blue is Madiar Said Rakimov of Uzbekistan. 24 years of age, Uzbekistan with a boxer in each of the 13 weights. And this a battle between reigning national champions at heavyweight. Good right hand driven into the body from Said Rakimov. Competing in his first Aiba World Boxing Championships as he's looking to get to work with heavy shots. His opponent, Vladislav Smialikov, in his second appearance at the World Championships, having boxed in Hamburg in 2017. 
comes to this. After boxing in Tokyo in the Olympic Games earlier this summer, his first Olympic appearance, and then followed that up with a quarter-final run in the World Military Games, a soldier in the Belarusian Army. And that's a tournament that the man in the blue corner actually won in the 2019 edition in Wuhan two years ago. And that is no mean feat because so many boxers competing in the World Championships are members of their nation's military. So to claim a medal in the SISM Championships is a, an impressive accomplishment indeed. Two minutes gone in the open rounds. Mialikav getting to work with that left jab, but then look at that hook crash around the corner from Saeed Rahimov. Both men digging away to the body on the inside. Short to the mark with his reverse one two is Saeed Rahimov. Good attack from Smialikov. Came forward with a double jab that fell short, but the right hand did get through. It was countered immediately by Saeed Rakimov. Resulting in a trade-off. But for my money, it was the man in red who got the better of it. Counter right hand wide of the mark as the two boxers exchange singles as they change positions in the boxing ring. Oh, that's a good left hook landed by Saeed Rakimov. Very good first round of boxing between two skillful operators. So, the first round taken unanimously by Saeed Rakimov. Make no mistake, Smialikov very much in this one. Some of the action then from the opening round. Said Rakimov really looking to target bent arm punches and hooks like that. Had success with it at mid range. So we're going to the second round then. Two boxers of a similar height is a height advantage for Smialikov. But completely different approaches to the sport. Smialikov looking to establish that straight right hand, whereas the man in blue likes to bob and weave and bomb away with hooks at mid-range. Can Smialikov get that left hand working to pile up some points and occupy the man in blue. Scoring with it to the body. Two jabs have come in the previous 10 seconds or so that have landed on the body of his opponent. There's a left jab in response from Saeed Rakimov. Both boxers working away with their free hand on the inside and that's uh, hitting on the break. From Saeed Rakimov, the shot didn't land. But the referee just reminding him about the fact he's not to breach that rule. Swarming attack from Saeed Rakimov was rather inaccurate. Didn't really score with any shots during that forward foray. Smialikau keeping that jab going, but he's picked off by a right-hand lead after his own left hand fell short. Smialikov, right cross to the body is a scoring shot. That's a beautiful left jab. My goodness, that was a ramrod shot. Powered out from the back foot and the shoulder, and there was plenty of pop on it, landing solidly with that lead left hand. Here's a right hand brought into play by Smialikov. Left jab is disruptive once again as the boxers fell into one another. Said Rakimov landing with a left hook. It was of the clipping variety. 
But a couple of solid lead left hands have been straightened out by Smialikev in this second round. Oh, that's a solid left hook landed once again as the two boxers were trading in that shot. The maxim is don't hook with a hooker. That's Smialikev showing that he's content to do that, but as I was mentioning at the start of this round, that appears to be the bread and butter of the boxer from Uzbekistan wearing blue. Right hand over the top was short of the mark. Smialikov going in search of his man behind the left jab once again. Good movement in the pocket. He came back with a corkscrew left, but as he was coming upwards, Saeed Rakimov got caught with a right hand from Smialikov. Left hook cuffing shot on the inside once again. Brief nod of respect exchange between the two boxers. The first round taken unanimously, remember, by the boxer wearing blue. This man did get to work with his left jab in the second round. I say got to work with it. He landed a couple of really solid, stiff jabs during the course of the second round. It's Rakimov. Saeed Rakimov, who has taken it unanimously once again. Smialikov trading by two rounds on all five cards with three minutes to go. I'm not quite sure where the towel is of the Uzbek coach. But he's trying to wipe off, he's trying to wipe off water with latex gloves. They're not the most of absorbent, it's not the most absorbent of material, so maybe just move the water and the moisture around the face of Said Rakimov before the start of this third round. So we're into the third round then. Vlasi. Vladislav Smialikov has conceded the first two rounds unanimously. But he's been in the contest, just not perhaps doing enough to take it for any of the five scoring judges. So given the context of the scorecards, he really does need a big final round here in a bid to turn this one around and progress into the second, excuse me, the round of 16. It's his second bout here at the World Championships in Belarus. It was a unanimous point decision winner over the man from Kenya, Joshua Wasike. And why that's significant is because in the third round, he produced some devastating punching with his right hand, an uppercut, brought about an eight count, and a chopping right hand sent the boxer from the Kenyan hit squad down to the canvas on a delayed reaction. And I think he needs some of that backhand pop here. There he wasn't too far away with it, but didn't get full extension because he was at mid-range. Oh, but how about that for a right hand from Said Rakhimov? Beyond the midpoint of round number three. And Smialikov has got to take his man out if he hopes to progress to the third preliminary round. Saeed Rakimov was the beneficiary of a bye in the first preliminary round, so it's been a five-day wait to get his tournament underway, but he's found his range pretty quickly. Was hooking away effectively in the opening round of this contest. Just turns away from that shot with nice head movement. Same defensive maneuver once again as Smialikov was in search of him. Smialikov trying to quicken his feet and close the distance, but he's moving very effectively, not dipping his head, but just turning away to cause the shot. Well, there's a reduced target, see? When he turns his head like that, 
Reduced target to land upon. Counter right hand out of the corner is a nice shot. It ended up being a check right hand because he spun off the line and left Smialika facing the corner post, bouncing off the turnbuckle. Good performance this by Said Rakimov. And again, the body language so instructive. Rather subdued return to the red corner by Vladislav Smialikav of Belarus. He knows that this one won't be going his way. And that's because Madiar Said Rakimov of Uzbekistan boxed very well indeed, taking the first two rounds unanimously. Kept himself out of harm's way in the third. And despite his efforts to close the distance and uncoil that potent right cross, Smialikav not able to find a range against a, an opponent who never stopped moving. Very good display indeed. Let's get the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, in the bout number 207 in the ring A, the winner on points by unanimous decision is the boxer out of the blue corner. So there is confirmation of a unanimous points decision verdict in favor of Madiar Said Rakhimov of Uzbekistan taking all three rounds for all five scoring judges. 10-9 across the board three times. Smialikav, the Olympic quarter finalist from Tokyo earlier this summer, not able to do enough to inconvenience Said Rakhimov or take any of the rounds. So for the second consecutive World Championships, Vladislav Smialikov eliminated at the second preliminary round. The three-time reigning national champion of Belaru Belarus, eliminated by the three-time national reigning champion of Uzbekistan. It is Said Rakhimov who goes through to the round of 16 in a 92-kilogram heavyweight division. A very good display of dynamic boxing from the Uzbekistan representative. Well, that concludes this eighth session of boxing here on the fifth day of competition at the 2021 World Boxing Championships in Belgrade. As we take a look at some of the results that we saw in our 15 scheduled contests. First one, a walkover in favor of the Indian boxer Akash Kumar. We saw the Olympic bronze medalist from Brazil eliminated by the home boxer Sada Magomedov. Abner Tejira eliminated in that contest. Julio Cesar La Cruz made his world championship debut as a heavyweight and eliminated the 2019 World Championship bronze medalist, Radoslav Pantelaev. But it was action-packed all the way with some quality from the boxers in the bantamweight and heavyweight divisions. So we'll leave you with images from some of the action that has unfolded during the course of this eighth session of boxing. We are back on air, 6 p.m. local time in what, 90 minutes time or thereabouts. So check your local listings wherever you're tuning in around the world and make sure you join us again for session number nine from the 2021 edition of the AIBA World Boxing Championships here in Belgrade. Thank you for staying with us and we'll see you again very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>